The Introduction to the King James Version of the Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Section 46 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Second Chronicles, chapters 29 to 36. This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta. Chapter 29 Hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old, and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and repaired them. And he brought in the priests and the Levites, and gathered them together into the east street, and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves, and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers, and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. For our fathers have trespassed, and done that which was evil in the sight of the Lord our God, and have forsaken him, and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord, and turned their backs. Also they have shut up the doors of the porch, and put out the lamps, and have not burned incense, nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the God of Israel. Wherefore the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and he hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. For, lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. Now it is in mine heart to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. My sons, be not now negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you to stand before him, to serve him, and that ye should minister unto him, and burn incense. Then the Levites arose, Mahath the son of Amasai, and Joel the son of Azariah, of the sons of the Kohathites, and of the sons of Merari, Kish the son of Abdi, and Azariah the son of Jehalalel. And of the Gershonites, Joah the son of Zima, and Eden the son of Joah. And of the sons of Elizaphan, Shimri and Jael. And of the sons of Asaph, Zechariah and Mataniah. And of the sons of Heman, Jehiel and Shimei. And of the sons of Jeduthun, Shemaiah and Uziel. And they gathered their brethren, and sanctified themselves, and came according to the commandment of the king, by the words of the Lord, to cleanse the house of the Lord. And the priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it, and brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it to carry it out abroad into the brook Kidron. Now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify, and on the eighth day of the month came they to the porch of the Lord. So they sanctified the house of the Lord in eight days, and in the sixteenth day of the first month they made an end. Then they went in to Hezekiah the king, and said, We have cleansed all the house of the Lord, and the altar of burnt offering, with all the vessels thereof, and the shewbread table with all the vessels thereof. Moreover, all the vessels which King Ahaz in his reign did cast away in his transgression, have we prepared and sanctified. And behold, they are before the altar of the Lord. Then Hezekiah the king rose early, and gathered the rulers of the city, and went up to the house of the Lord. And they brought seven bullocks, and seven rams, and seven lambs, and seven he-goats, for a sin-offering for the kingdom, and for the sanctuary, 
and for Judah. And he commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bullocks, and the priests received the blood, and sprinkled it on the altar. Likewise, when they had killed the rams, they sprinkled the blood upon the altar. They killed also the lambs, and they sprinkled the blood upon the altar. And they brought forth the he-goats for the sin offering before the king and the congregation. And they laid their hands upon them, and the priest killed them. And they made reconciliation with their blood upon the altar, to make an atonement for all Israel. For the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering should be made for all Israel. And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, with psalteries, and with harps, according to the commandment of David, and of Gad the king's seer, and Nathan the prophet. For so was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David, and the priests with the trumpets. And Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offering upon the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord began also with the trumpets, and with the instruments ordained by David, king of Israel. And all the congregation worshipped, and the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded. And all this continued until the burnt offering was finished. And when they had made an end of offering, the king and all that were present with him bowed themselves and worshipped. Moreover, Hezekiah the king and the princes commanded the Levites to sing praise unto the Lord with the words of David and of Asaph the seer. And they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. Then Hezekiah answered and said, now ye have consecrated yourselves unto the Lord. Come near and bring sacrifices, and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. And the congregation brought in sacrifices and thank offerings, and as many as were of a free heart, burnt offerings. And the number of the burnt offerings which the congregation brought was threescore and ten bullocks, an hundred rams, and two hundred lambs, all these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. And the consecrated things were six hundred oxen and three thousand sheep. But the priests were too few, so that they could not flay all the burnt offerings. Wherefore their brethren, the Levites, did help them, till the work was ended, and until the other priests had sanctified themselves. For the Levites were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. And also the burnt offerings were in abundance, with the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings for every burnt offering. So the service of the house of the Lord was set in order. And Hezekiah rejoiced, and all the people, that God had prepared the people, for the thing was done suddenly. Chapter 30 And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel, and his princes, and all the congregation in Jerusalem, to keep the Passover in the second month. They could not keep it at that time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it was written. So the posts went with the letters from the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandments of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, 
turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return to the remnant of you that are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. And be not like your fathers, and like your brethren, which trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation, as ye see. Now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord, and enter into his sanctuary, which he hath sanctified for ever, and serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if ye turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them, that lead them captive, so that they shall come again into this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful, and will not turn away his face from you, if ye return unto him. So the posts passed from city to city, through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even unto Zebulun. But they laughed them to scorn, and mocked them. Nevertheless, diverse of Asher and Manasseh, and of Zebulun, humbled themselves, and came to Jerusalem. Also in Judah, the hand of God was to give them one heart, to do the commandment of the king and of the princes, by the word of the Lord. And there assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great congregation. And they rose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for incense took they away, and cast them into the brook Kidron. Then they killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the second month, and the priests and the Levites were ashamed, and sanctified themselves, and brought in the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. And they stood in their place, after their manner, according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood which they received of the hand of the Levites, for there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore the Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passovers, for every one that was not clean, to sanctify them unto the Lord. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves, yet did they eat the Passover, otherwise than it was written. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, the good Lord pardon every one that prepareth his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord God hearkened to Hezekiah, and healed the people. And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days, with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that taught the good knowledge of the Lord. And they did eat throughout the feast seven days, offering peace offerings, and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. And the whole assembly took counsel to keep other seven days, and they kept other seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah, king of Judah, did give to the congregation a thousand bullocks and seven thousand sheep, and the princes gave to the congregation a thousand bullocks and ten thousand sheep, and a great number of priests sanctified themselves. And all the congregation of Judah with the priests, and the Levites, and all the congregation that came out of Israel, and the strangers that came out of the land of Israel, and that dwelt in Judah, rejoiced. So there was great joy in Jerusalem, for since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there was not the like in Jerusalem. 
then the priests the levites arose and blessed the people and their voice was heard and their prayer came up to his holy dwelling place even unto heaven chapter thirty one now when all this was finished all israel that were present went out to the cities of judah and break the images in pieces and cut down the groves and threw down the high places and the altars out of all judah and benjamin in ephraim also and manasseh until they had utterly destroyed them all then all the children of israel returned every man to his possession into their own cities and hezekiah appointed the courses of the priests and the levites after their courses every man according to his service the priests and levites for burnt offerings and for peace offerings to minister and to give thanks and to praise in the gates of the tents of the lord he appointed also the king's portion of his substance for the burnt offerings to it for the morning and evening burnt offerings and the burnt offerings for the sabbaths and for the new moons and for the set feasts as it is written in the law of the lord moreover he commanded the people that dwelt in jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the levites that they might be encouraged in the law of the lord and as soon as the commandment came abroad the children of israel brought in abundance the first fruits of corn wine and oil and honey and of all the increase of the field and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly and concerning the children of israel and judah that dwelt in the cities of judah they also brought in the tithe of oxen and sheep and the tithe of holy things which were consecrated unto the lord their god and laid them by heaps in the third month they began to lay the foundation of the heaps and finished them in the seventh month and when hezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps they blessed the lord and his people israel then hezekiah questioned with the priests and the levites concerning the heaps and azariah the chief priest of the house of zadok answered him and said since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the lord we have had enough to eat and have left plenty for the lord hath blessed his people and that which is left in this great store then hezekiah commanded to prepare chambers in the house of the lord and they prepared them and brought in the offerings and the tithes and the dedicated things faithfully over which cononiah the levite was ruler and shimei his brother was the next and jehiel and azaziah and nahath and asahel and jeremoth and jozabad and eliel and esmachiah and mahath and benaiah were overseers under the hand of conaniah and shimei his brother at the commandment of hezekiah the king and azariah the ruler of the house of god and Korah the son of emna the levite the porter toward the east was over the freewill offerings of god to distribute the oblations of the lord and the most holy things and next him were eden and maniamin and jeshua and shemiah amariah and shechaniah in the cities of the priests in their set office to give to their brethren by courses as well to the great as to the small beside their genealogy of males from three years old and upward even unto every one that entereth into the house of the lord his daily portion for their service and their charges according to their courses both to the genealogy of the priests by the house of their fathers and the levites from twenty years old and upward in the charges by their courses and to the genealogy of all their little ones their wives and their sons and their daughters through all the congregation for in their set office they sanctified themselves in holiness 
also of the sons of Aaron the priests, which were in the fields of the suburbs of their cities. In every several city, the men that were expressed by name to give portions to all the males among the priests, and to all that were reckoned by genealogies among the Levites. And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah, and wrought that which was good and right and truth before the Lord his God. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, and in the law, and in the commandments, to seek his God, he did it with all his heart, and prospered. Chapter 32 After these things, and the establishment thereof, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came, and entered into Judah, and encamped against the fenced cities, and thought to win them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib was come, and that he was purposed to fight against Jerusalem, he took counsel with his princes and his mighty men to stop the waters of the fountains which were without the city, and they did help him. So there was gathered much people together who stopped all the fountains, and the brook that ran through the midst of the land, saying, why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? Also he strengthened himself, and built up all the wall that was broken, and raised it up to the towers, and another wall without, and repaired Milo in the city of David, and made darts and shields in abundance. And he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him in the street of the gate of the city, and spake comfortably to them, saying, Be strong and courageous, be not afraid, nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us, and to fight our battles. And the people rested themselves upon the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. After this did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, send his servants to Jerusalem, but he himself laid siege against Lachish, and all his power with him, unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, and unto all Judah that were at Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith Sennacherib, king of Assyria, Whereon do ye trust that ye abide in the siege of Jerusalem? Doth not Hezekiah persuade you to give over yourselves to die by famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God shall deliver us out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Hath not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars, and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall worship before one altar, and burn incense upon it? Know ye not what I and my fathers have done unto all the people of other lands? Were the gods of the nations of those lands any ways able to deliver their lands out of mine hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people out of mine hand, that your God should be able to deliver you out of mine hand? Now, therefore, let not Hezekiah deceive you, nor persuade you on this manner, neither yet believe him, for no god of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of mine hand and out of the hand of my fathers how much less shall your god deliver you out of mine hand and his servants spake yet more against the lord god and against his servant hezekiah he wrote also letters to rail on the lord god of israel and to speak against him saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of mine hand, so shall not the god of Hezekiah deliver his people out of mine hand. 
Then they cried with a loud voice in the Jews' speech unto the people of Jerusalem that were on the wall, to affright them, and to trouble them, that they might take the city. And they spake against the God of Jerusalem, as against the gods of the people of the earth, which were the work of the hands of man. And for this cause Hezekiah the king, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, prayed and cried to heaven. And the Lord sent an angel, which cut off all the mighty men of valor, and the leaders and captains in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. And when he was come into the house of his God, they that came forth of his own bowels slew him there with the sword. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all other, and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts unto the Lord to Jerusalem, and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was magnified in the sight of all nations from thenceforth. In those days Hezekiah was sick to the death, and prayed unto the Lord, and he spake unto him, and he gave him a sign. But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore there was wrath upon him, and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah had exceeding much riches and honor, and he made himself treasuries for silver and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shields and for all manner of pleasant jewels. Storehouses also for the increase of corn and wine and oil, and stalls for all manner of beasts, and coats for flocks. Moreover, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him substance very much. This same Hezekiah also stopped the upper watercourse of Gihon, and brought it straight down to the west side of the city of David. And Hezekiah prospered in all his work. Howbeit, in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, who sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land, God left him to try him that he might know all that was in his heart. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his goodness, behold, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, and in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the chiefest of the sepulchres of the sons of David. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did him honor at his death. And Manasseh, his son, reigned in his stead. Chapter 33 Manasseh was twelve years old when he began to reign, and he reigned fifty and five years in Jerusalem. But did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places, which Hezekiah his father had broken down. And he reared up altars for Balaam, and made groves, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. Also he built altars in the house of the Lord, whereof the Lord had said, 
in Jerusalem shall my name be for ever. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also he observed times, and used enchantments, and used witchcraft, and dealt with a familiar spirit, and with wizards. And he wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made, in the house of God, of which God had said to David, and to Solomon his son, In this house, and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name for ever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land, which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them, according to the whole law, and the statutes, and the ordinances, by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err, and to do worse than the heathen, whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns, and bound him with fetters, and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed unto him. And he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Now after this he built a wall without the city of David, on the west side of Gihon, in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate, and compassed around Ophel, and raised it up a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. And he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord, and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord, and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, and sacrificed thereon peace offerings and thank offerings, and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places, yet unto the Lord their God only. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, and his prayer unto his God, and the words of the seers that spake to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also, and how God was entreated of him, and all his sins, and his trespass, and the places wherein he built high places, and set up groves, and graven images, before he was humbled, Behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house. And Ammon, his son, reigned in his stead. Ammon was two and twenty years old when he began to reign, and reigned two years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Manasseh his father. For Ammon sacrificed unto all the carved images which Manasseh his father had made, and served them, and humbled not himself before the Lord, as Manasseh his father had humbled himself. But Ammon trespassed more and more. And... 
his servants conspired against him and slew him in his own house but the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against king ammon and the people of the land made josiah his son king in his stead chapter thirty four josiah was eight years old when he began to reign and he reigned in jerusalem one and thirty years and he did that which was right in the sight of the lord and walked in the ways of david his father and declined neither to the right hand nor to the left for in the eighth year of his reign while he was yet young he began to seek after the god of david his father and in the twelfth year he began to purge judah and jerusalem from the high places and the groves and the carved images and the molten images and they brake down the altars of balaam in his presence and the images that were on high above them he cut down and the groves and the carved images and the molten images he brake in pieces and made dust of them and strode it upon the graves of them that had sacrificed unto them and he burnt the bones of the priests upon their altars and cleansed judah and jerusalem and so did he in the cities of manasseh and ephraim and simeon even unto naphtali with their mattocks round about and when he had broken down the altars and the groves and had beaten the graven images into powder and cut down all the idols throughout all the land of israel he returned to jerusalem now in the eighteenth year of his reign when he had purged the land and the house he sent shaphan the son of azaliah and messiah the governor of the city and joah the son of joahaz the recorder to repair the house of the lord his god and when they came to hilkiah the high priest they delivered the money that was brought into the house of god which the levites that kept the doors had gathered of the hand of manasseh and ephraim and of all judah and benjamin and they returned to jerusalem and they put it in the hand of the workmen that had the oversight of the house of the lord and they gave it to the workmen that wrought in the house of the lord to repair and amend the house even to the artificers and builders gave they it to buy hewn stone and timber for couplings and to floor the houses which the kings of judah had destroyed and the men did the work faithfully and the overseers of them were jahath and obadiah the levites of the sons of merari and zechariah and mushalam of the sons of the kohathites to set it forward and other of the levites all that could skill of instruments of music also they were over the bearers of burdens and were overseers of all that wrought the work in any manner of service and of the levites there were scribes and officers and porters and when they had brought out the money that was brought into the house of the lord hilkiah the priest found a book of the law of the lord given by moses and hilkiah answered and said to shaphan the scribe i have found the book of the law in the house of the lord and hilkiah delivered the book to shaphan and shaphan carried the book to the king and brought the king word back again saying all that was committed to thy servants they do it and they have gathered together the money that was found in the house of the lord and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and to the hand of the workmen then shaphan the scribe told the king saying hilkiah the priest hath given me a book 
and Shafen read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the law, that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah and Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, and Abdon, the son of Micah, and Shaphan, the scribe, and Asaiah, a servant of the king's, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me, and for them that are left in Israel, and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out against us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord, to do after all that is written in this book. And Hilkiah and they that the king had appointed went to Hulda, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikveth, the son of Hesra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem, in the college. And they spake to her to that effect. And she answered them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell ye the man that sent you to me, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the curses that are written in the book, which they have read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me, and have burned incense unto other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be poured out upon this place, and shall not be quenched. And as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, so shall ye say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, concerning the words which thou hast heard, Because thine heart was tender, and thou didst humble thyself before God, when thou heardest his words against this place, and against the inhabitants thereof, and humbledst thyself before me, and didst rend thy clothes, and weep before me, I have even heard thee also, saith the Lord, Behold, I will gather thee to thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered to thy grave in peace. Neither shall thine eyes see all the evil that I will bring upon this place, and upon the inhabitants of the same. So they brought the king word again. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem, and the king went up into the house of the Lord. And all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests, and the Levites, and all the people, great and small. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood in his place, and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord, and to keep his commandments, and his testimonies, and his statutes, with all his heart, and with all his soul, to perform the words of the covenant which are written in this book. And he caused all that were present in Jerusalem, and Benjamin, to stand to it. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. And Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that pertained to the children of Israel, and made all that were present in Israel to serve, even to serve the Lord their God. And all his days they departed not from following the Lord, the God of their fathers. Chapter 35 Moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem, and they killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month. And he set the priests in their charges, and encouraged them to the service of the house of the Lord, and said unto the Levites that taught all Israel, 
which were holy unto the Lord. Put the holy ark in the house which Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, did build. It shall not be a burden upon your shoulders. Serve now the Lord your God, and his people Israel, and prepare yourselves by the houses of your fathers, after your courses, according to the writing of David, king of Israel, and according to the writing of Solomon, his son and stand in the holy place, according to the divisions of the families of the fathers of your brethren, the people, and after the divisions of the families of the Levites. So kill the Passover, and sanctify yourselves, and prepare your brethren, that they may do according to the word of the Lord, by the hand of Moses. And Josiah gave to the people of the flock, lambs and kids, all for the Passover offerings, for all that were present, to the number of thirty thousand and three thousand bullocks. These were of the king's substance. And his princes gave willingly unto the people, to the priests and to the Levites, Hilkiah and Zechariah and Jehiel, rulers of the house of God, gave unto the priests for the Passover offerings two thousand and six hundred small cattle and three hundred oxen. Conaniah also, and Shemaiah, and Nathaniel his brethren, and Hashabiah, and Jael, and Jozebad, chief of the Levites, gave unto the Levites for Passover offerings five thousand small cattle and five hundred oxen. So the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their place, and the Levites in their courses, according to the king's commandment. And they killed the Passover, and the priests sprinkled the blood from their hands, and the Levites flayed them. And they removed the burnt offerings, that they might give according to the divisions of the families of the people, to offer unto the Lord, as it is written in the book of Moses. And so did they with the oxen. And they roasted the Passover with fire, according to the ordinance. But the other holy offerings sawed they in pots, and in cauldrons, and in pans, and divided them speedily among all the people. And afterwards they made ready for themselves and for the priests, because the priests, the sons of Aaron, were busied in offering of burnt offerings and the fat until night. Therefore the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aaron. And the singers the sons of Asaph were in their place, according to the commandment of David. And Asaph, and Heman, and Jeduthun, the king's seer. And the porters waited at every gate. They might not depart from their service, for their brethren, the Levites, prepared for them. So all the service of the Lord was prepared the same day to keep the Passover, and to offer burnt offerings upon the altar of the Lord, according to all the commandment of King Josiah. And the children of Israel that were present kept the Passover at that time, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days. And there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet, Neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept, and the priests, and the Levites, and all Judah and Israel that were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In the eighteenth year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover kept, and after all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of egypt came up to fight against carchemish by euphrates and josiah went out against him but he sent ambassadors to him 
saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste. Forbear thee from meddling with God, who is with me, that he destroy thee not. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him, and hearkened not unto the words of Nico from the mouth of God, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo, and the archers shot at King Josiah. And the king said to his servants, Have me away for I am sore wounded. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot, and put him in the second chariot that he had, and they brought him to Jerusalem. And he died, and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah, and all the singing men and the singing women spake of Josiah in their lamentations to this day, and made them an ordinance in Israel, and, behold, they are written in the lamentations. Now all the rest of the acts of Josiah and his goodness, according to that which was written in the law of the Lord, and his deeds, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Chapter 36 Then the people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and made him king in his father's stead, in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was twenty and three years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. The king of Egypt put him down at Jerusalem, and condemned the land in an hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And the king of Egypt made Eliakim, his brother, king over Judah and Jerusalem and turned his name to Jehoiakim. And Necho took Jehoahaz, his brother, and carried him to Egypt. Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Against him came up Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bound him in fetters to carry him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also carried of the vessels of the house of the Lord to Babylon, and put them in his temple at Babylon. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoiakim, and his abominations which he did, and that which was found in him. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And Jehoiakim, his son, reigned in his stead. Jehoiakim was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. And when the year was expired, King Nebuchadnezzar sent and brought him to Babylon with the goodly vessels of the house of the Lord, and made Zedekiah his brother king over Judah and Jerusalem. Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign and reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord his God, and humbled not himself before Jeremiah the prophet, speaking from the mouth of the Lord. 
and he also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God. But he stiffened his neck, and hardened his heart, from turning unto the Lord God of Israel. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen, and polluted the house of the Lord which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up betimes and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, and despised his words, and misused his prophets, until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people, till there was no remedy. Therefore he brought upon them the king of the Chaldees, who slew their young men with the sword in the house of their sanctuary and had no compassion upon young man or maiden, old man or him that stooped for age, he gave them all into his hand. And all the vessels of the house of God, great and small, and the treasures of the house of the Lord, and the treasures of the king and of his princes, all these he brought to Babylon and they burnt the house of God, and brake down the wall of Jerusalem, and burnt all the palaces thereof with fire, and destroyed all the goodly vessels thereof. And them that had escaped from the sword carried he away to Babylon, where they were servants to him and his sons until the reign of the kingdom of Persia. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah, until the land had enjoyed her Sabbath, for as long as she lay desolate, she kept Sabbath, to fulfill threescore and ten years. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth hath the Lord God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him an house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? The Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. End of Section 46 Section 47 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version Ezra, Chapters 1 through 10 This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta Chapter 1 now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and put it also in writing, saying, Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, The Lord God of heaven hath given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he hath charged me to build him an house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? His God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God, which is in Jerusalem. 
and whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver, and with gold, and with goods, and with beasts, beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. Then rose up the chief of the fathers of Judah, and Benjamin, and the priests, and the Levites, with all them whose spirit God had raised, to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. And all they that were about them strengthened their hands with vessels of silver, with gold, with goods, and with beasts, and with precious things, beside all that was willingly offered. Also Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem, and had put them in the house of his gods. Even those did Cyrus king of Persia bring forth by the hand of Mithridath the treasurer, and numbered them unto Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah. And this is the number of them. Thirty chargers of gold, a thousand chargers of silver, nine and twenty knives, thirty basins of gold, silver basins of a second sort, four hundred and ten, and other vessels a thousand. All the vessels of gold and of silver were five thousand and four hundred. All these did Sheshbazar bring up with them of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. Chapter 2 Now these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity, of those which had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away unto Babylon, and came again unto Jerusalem and Judah, every one unto his city, which came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Seraiah, Reeliah, Mordecai, Belshan, Mizpar, Bigvei, Rehum, Bena. The number of the men of the people of Israel, the children of Parash, two thousand and hundred and seventy-two, the children of Shephatiah, three hundred seventy and two, the children of Ara, seven hundred seventy-five, the children of Pehath Moab, of the children of Jeshua and Joab, two thousand eight hundred and twelve. The children of Elam, a thousand two hundred fifty and four. The children of Zatu, nine hundred forty and five. The children of Zekai, seven hundred and three score. The children of Benai, six hundred forty and two. The children of Bibai, six hundred twenty and three. The children of Osgad, a thousand two hundred twenty and two. The children of Adonikam, six hundred sixty and six. The children of Bigvai, two thousand fifty and six. The children of Aden, four hundred fifty and four. The children of Ater, of Hezekiah, ninety and eight. The children of Bezai, three hundred twenty and three. The children of Jorah, one hundred and twelve. The children of Heshum, two hundred twenty and three. The children of Gibar, ninety and five. The children of Bethlehem, an hundred twenty and three. The men of Netophah, fifty and six. The men of Anathoth, an hundred twenty and eight. The children of Asmaveth, forty and two. The children of Kirjatharim, Chephira and Beroth, seven hundred and forty and three. The children of Ramah and Gaba, six hundred twenty and one. The men of Michmas, an hundred twenty and two. The men of Bethel and Ai, two hundred twenty and three. The children of Nebo, fifty and two. The children of Megbish, an hundred fifty and six. The children of the other Elam, a thousand two hundred fifty and four. The children of Harim, three hundred and twenty. The children of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, seven hundred twenty and five. The children of Jericho, three hundred forty and five. The children of Sina, three thousand and six hundred and thirty. The priests. The children of Jediah, of the house of Jeshua, nine hundred seventy and three. 
the children of Imer, a thousand fifty and two, the children of Pashur, a thousand two hundred forty and seven, the children of Harim, a thousand and seventeen, the Levites, the children of Jeshua and Kadmiel, of the children of Hodavia, seventy and four, the singers, the children of Asaph, an hundred twenty and eight. The children of the porters, the children of Shalom, the children of Ater, the children of Talmon, the children of Akub, the children of Hatita, the children of Shobai, in all an hundred thirty and nine. The Nathanims, the children of Ziha, the children of Hasufa, the children of Tebeoth, the children of Keros, the children of Siaha, the children of Pedon, the children of Lebanah, the children of Hagabah, the children of Akub, the children of Hagab, the children of Shalmai, the children of Hanan, the children of Gidel, the children of Gehar, the children of Reiah, the children of Rezin, the children of Nakoda, the children of Gezam, the children of Uza, the children of Pasia, the children of Besai, the children of Esna, the children of Mehunim, the children of Nephusim, the children of Bakbuk, the children of Hakufa, the children of Harhor, the children of Basluth, the children of Mehida, the children of Harsha, the children of Barkos, the children of Sisera, the children of Thema, the children of Neziah, the children of Hatipha, the children of Solomon's servants, the children of Sotai, the children of Sophereth, the children of Peruda, the children of Jela, the children of Darkon, the children of Gidel, the children of Shephatiah, the children of Hatil, the children of Pokereth, of Zebaim, the children of Ami. All the Nathanims and the children of Solomon's servants were three hundred ninety and two. And these were they which went up from Telmela, Telharsa, Terub, Adan, and Emer. But they could not shew their father's house and their seed, whether they were of Israel. The children of Delea, the children of Tobiah, the children of Nekoda, six hundred fifty and two. And of the children of the priests, the children of Hebiah, the children of Kaz, the children of Barzillai, which took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and was called after their name. These sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but they were not found. Therefore were they, as polluted, put from the priesthood. And the Tirshatha said unto them, that they should not eat of the most holy things, till there stood up a priest with Urim and with Thummim. The whole congregation together was forty and two thousand three hundred and threescore beside their servants and their maids, of whom there were seven thousand three hundred thirty and seven. And there were among them two hundred singing men and singing women. Their horses were seven hundred thirty and six, their mules two hundred forty and five, their camels four hundred thirty and five, their asses six thousand seven hundred and twenty. And some of the chief of the fathers, when they came to the house of the Lord, which is at Jerusalem, offered freely for the house of God, to set it up in his place, they gave, after their ability, unto the treasure of the work, three score and one thousand drams of gold, and five thousand pound of silver, and one hundred priests' garments. So the priests and the Levites and some of the people, and the singers, and the porters, and the Nathanims, dwelt in their cities, and all Israel in their cities. Chapter 3 And when the seventh month was come, and the children of Israel were in the cities, the people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Then stood up Jeshua, the son of Josadic and his brethren the priests, and Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, and his brethren, and built it the altar of the God of Israel, to offer burnt offerings thereon, 
as it is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Then they set the altar upon his bases, for fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. And they offered burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord, even burnt offerings, morning and evening. They kept also the feast of the tabernacles, as it is written, and offered the daily burnt offerings by number, according to the custom, as the duty of every day required. And afterward offered the continual burnt offering, both of the new moons, and of all the set feasts of the Lord that were consecrated, and of every one that willingly offered a free will offering unto the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month began they to offer burnt offerings unto the Lord. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. They gave money also unto the masons and to the carpenters, and meat and drink and oil, unto them of Zidon and to them of Tyre, to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea of Joppa, according to the grant that they had of Cyrus, king of Persia. Now, in the second year of their coming unto the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month, began Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua the son of Josadic, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests, and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites, from twenty years old and upward, to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. Then stood Jeshua with his sons and his brethren, Cadmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah, together to set forward the workmen in the house of God, the sons of Henadad, with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with symbols, to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good, for his mercy endureth for ever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites, and chief of the fathers, who were ancient men, that had seen the first house, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, wept with a loud voice, and many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud shout, and the noise was heard afar off. Chapter 4 Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, then they came to Zerubbabel, and to the chief of the fathers, and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assur, which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, Ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God. But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah, and troubled them in building, and hired counsellors against them, to frustrate their purpose, all the days of Cyrus king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius king of Persia. And in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him, an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. And in the days of Artaxerxes wrote Bishlem, Methredath, Tabiel, and the rest of their companions unto Artaxerxes, king of Persia, 
and the writing of the letter was written in the Syrian tongue, and interpreted in the Syrian tongue. Rehum the Chancellor and Shimshai the Scribe wrote a letter against Jerusalem to Artaxerxes the king, in this sort. Then wrote Rehum the Chancellor and Shimshai the Scribe and the rest of their companions, the Danaites, the Apharsathkites, the Tarpalites, the Epharsites, the Archivites, the Babylonians, the Susankites, the Dehavites, and the Elamites, and the rest of the nations, whom the great and noble Asnepher brought over, and set in the cities of Samaria, and the rest that are on this side of the river, and at such a time. This is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even unto Artaxerxes the king. Thy servants, the men on this side the river, and at such a time be it known unto the king, that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and the bad city, and have set up the walls thereof, and joined the foundations. Be it known now unto the king, that if this city be builded, and the walls set up again, then will they not pay toll, tribute, and custom. And so thou shalt endamage the revenue of the kings. Now, because we have maintenance from the king's palace, and it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonour, therefore have we sent and certified the king, that search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers, so shalt thou find in the book of the records, and know that this city is a rebellious city, and hurtful unto kings and provinces, and that they have moved sedition within the same of old time, for which cause was this city destroyed. We certify the king that, if this city be builded again, and the walls thereof set up, by this means thou shalt have no portion on this side the river. Then sent the king an answer unto Rehum the chancellor, and to Shimshai the scribe, and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria, and to the rest of their companions that dwell in Samaria, and unto the rest beyond the river. Peace, and at such a time. The letter which ye sent unto us hath been plainly read before me, and I commanded, and search hath been made, and it is found that this city of old time hath made insurrection against kings, and that rebellion and sedition have been made therein. There have been mighty kings also over Jerusalem, which have ruled over all countries beyond the river, and toll, tribute, and custom was paid unto them. Give ye now commandment to cause these men to cease, and that this city be not builded, until another commandment shall be given from me. Take heed now that ye fail not to do this. Why should damage grow to the hurt of the kings? Now, when the copy of King Artaxerxes' letter was read before Rehum and Shimshai the scribe and their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and made them to cease by force and power. Then ceased the work of the house of God which is at Jerusalem. So it ceased unto the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Chapter 5 Then the prophets Haggai the prophet, and Zechariah the son of Edo, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem, in the name of the God of Israel, even unto them. Then rose up Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua the son of Josadak, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping them. 
at the same time came to them tatnai governor on this side of the river and shethar bosnai and their companions and said thus unto them who hath commanded you to build this house and to make up this wall then said we unto them after this manner what are the names of the men that make this building but the eye of their god was upon the elders of the jews that they could not cause them to cease till the matter came to darius and then they returned answer by letter concerning this matter the copy of the letter that tachnai governor on the side of the river and shethar bosnai and his companions the arphaxacthites which were on this side of the river sent unto darius the king they sent a letter unto him wherein was written thus unto darius the king all peace be it known unto the king that we went into the province of judea to the house of the great god which is builded with great stones and timber is laid in the walls and this work goeth fast on and prospereth in their hands then asked we those elders and said unto them thus who commanded you to build this house and to make up these walls we asked their names also to certify thee that we might write the names of the men that were the chief of them and thus they returned us answer saying we are the servants of the god of heaven and earth and build the house that was builded these many years ago which a great king of israel builded and set up but after that our fathers had provoked the god of heaven unto wrath he gave them into the hand of nebuchadnezzar the king of babylon the chaldean who destroyed this house and carried away the people into babylon but in the first year of cyrus the king of babylon the same king cyrus made a decree to build this house of god and the vessels also of gold and silver of the house of god which nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that was in jerusalem and brought them into the temple of babylon those did cyrus the king take out of the temple of babylon and they were delivered unto one whose name was shesh bazar whom he had made governor and said unto him take these vessels go carry them into the temple that is in jerusalem and let the house of god be builded in his place then came the same sheshbazar and laid the foundation of the house of god which is in jerusalem and since that time even until now hath it been in building and yet it is not finished now therefore if it seem good to the king let there be search made in the king's treasure-house which is there at babylon whether it be so that a decree was made of cyrus the king to build this house of god at jerusalem and let the king send his pleasure to us concerning this matter chapter six then darius the king made a decree and search was made in the house of the rolls where the treasures were laid up in babylon and there was found at acmetha in the palace that is in the province of the medes a roll and therein was a record thus written in the first year of cyrus the king the same cyrus the king made a decree concerning the house of god at jerusalem let the house be builded the place where they offered sacrifices and let the foundations thereof be strongly laid the height thereof threescore cubits and the breadth thereof threescore cubits with three rows of great stones and a row of new timber and let the expenses be given out of the king's house and also let the golden and silver vessels of the house of god which nebuchadnezzar took forth out of the temple which is at jerusalem and brought unto babylon be restored and brought again unto the temple which is at jerusalem every one to his place and place them in the house of god now therefore tatnai governor beyond the river shethar balsnai and your companions the afarsakthites 
which are beyond the river, be ye far from thence. Let the work of this house of God alone. Let the governor of the Jews and the elders of the Jews build this house of God in his place. Moreover, I make a decree what ye shall do to the elders of these Jews for the building of this house of God, that of the king's goods, even of the tribute beyond the river, forthwith expenses be given unto these men, that they be not hindered. And to that which they have need of, both young bullocks and rams and lambs, for the burnt offerings of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the appointment of the priests which are at Jerusalem, let it be given them day by day without fail, that they may offer sacrifices of sweet savours unto the God of heaven, and pray for the life of the king and of his sons. Also I have made a decree that whosoever shall alter this word let timber be pulled down from his house, and being set up, let him be hanged thereon, and let his house be made a dunghill for this. And the God that hath caused his name to dwell there, destroy all kings and people, that shall put to their hand to alter and to destroy this house of God, which is at Jerusalem. I, Darius, have made a decree. Let it be done with speed. Then Tatnai, governor on this side of the river, Shethar Bosnai, and their companions, according to that which Darius the king had sent, so they did speedily. And the elders of the Jews builded, and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo, and they builded and finished it, according to the commandment of the God of Israel, and according to the commandments of Cyrus and Darius, and Artaxerxes, king of Persia. And this house was finished on the third day of the month Adar, which was in the sixth year of the reign of Darius the king. And the children of Israel the priests and the Levites, and the rest of the children of the captivity, kept the dedication of this house of God with joy, and offered at the dedication of this house of God an hundred bullocks, two hundred rams, four hundred lambs, and a sin offering for all Israel, twelve he-goats, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. And they set the priests in their divisions, and the Levites in their courses, for the service of God, which is at Jerusalem, as it is written in the book of Moses. And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the fourteenth day of the first month. For the priests and the Levites were purified together. All of them were pure and killed the Passover for all the children of the captivity, and for their brethren, the priests, and for themselves. And the children of Israel which were come again out of captivity, and all such as had separated themselves unto them from the filthiness of the heathen of the land to seek the Lord God of Israel, did eat and kept the feast of unleavened bread seven days with joy. For the Lord had made them joyful, and turned the heart of the king of Assyria unto them, to strengthen their hands in the work of the house of God, the God of Israel. Chapter 7 Now after these things, in the reign of Artaxerxes, king of Persia, Ezra, the son of Seraiah, the son of Ezariah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Shalom, the son of Zadok, the son of Ahitub, the son of Amariah, the son of Azariah, the son of Merioth, the son of Zerahiah, the son of Uzai, the son of Bukai, the son of Abishua, the son of Phinehas, 
the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the chief priest. This Ezra went up from Babylon, and he was already scribe in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him all his request, according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. And there went up some of the children of Israel, and of the priests, and of the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the Nathanims, unto Jerusalem, in the seventh year of Artaxerxes the king. And he came to Jerusalem in the fifth month, which was in the seventh year of the king. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon. And on the first day of the fifth month came he to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. Now this is the copy of the letter that the king Artaxerxes gave unto Ezra the priest, the scribe, even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the Lord, and of his statutes to Israel. Artaxerxes, king of kings, unto Ezra the priest, a scribe of the law of the God of heaven, perfect peace, and at such a time. I will make a decree that all they of the people of Israel, and of his priests and Levites, in my realm, which are minded by their own free will to go up to Jerusalem, to go with thee, for as much as thou art sent of the king, and of his seven counsellors, to inquire concerning Judah and Jerusalem, according to the law of thy God, which is in thine hand, and to carry the silver and gold which the king and his counsellors have freely offered unto the God of Israel, whose habitation is in Jerusalem. And all the silver and gold that thou canst find in all the province of Babylon, with the freewill offering of the people and of the priests, offering willingly for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem, that thou mayest buy speedily with this money bullocks, rams, lambs, with their meat offerings and their drink offerings, and offer them upon the altar of the house of your God, which is in Jerusalem. And whatsoever shall seem good to thee and to thy brethren to do with the rest of the silver and the gold, that do after the will of your God. The vessels also that are given thee for the service of the house of thy God, those deliver thou before the God of Jerusalem. And whatsoever more shall be needful for the house of thy God, which thou shalt have occasion to bestow, bestow it out of the king's treasure house. And I, even I, Artaxerxes the king, do make a decree to all the treasures which are beyond the river, that whatsoever Ezra the priest, the scribe of the law of the God of heaven, shall require of you, it shall be done speedingly, unto an hundred talents of silver, and to an hundred measures of wheat, and to an hundred baths of wine, and to an hundred baths of oil, and salt, without prescribing how much. Whatsoever is commanded by the God of heaven, let it be diligently done for the house of the God of heaven. For why should there be wrath against the realm of the king and his sons? Also, we certify you that touching any of the priests and Levites, singers, porters, Nathanims, or ministers of this house of God, it shall not be lawful to impose toll, tribute, or custom upon them. And thou, Ezra, after the wisdom of thy God that is in thine hand, set magistrates and judges, which may judge all the people that are beyond the river, all such as know the laws of thy God, 
and teach ye them that know them not. And whosoever will not do the law of thy God and the law of the king, let judgment be executed speedily upon him, whether it be unto death or to banishment, or to confiscation of goods, or to imprisonment. Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers, which hath put such a thing as this in the king's heart, to beautify the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem, and hath extended mercy unto me before the king and his counsellors, and before all the king's mighty princes. And I was strengthened, as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me. And I gathered together out of Israel chief men to go up with me. Chapter 8 These are now the chief of their fathers, and this is the genealogy of them that went up with me from Babylon, in the reign of Artaxerxes the king. Of the sons of Phinehas, Gershom. Of the sons of Ithamar, Daniel. Of the sons of David, of the sons of Shechaniah, of the sons of Pharosh, Zechariah. And with him were reckoned, by genealogy of the males, an hundred and fifty. Of the sons of Pehath Moab, Elehinai, the son of Zerahiah, and with him two hundred males. Of the sons of Shechaniah, the son of Jehaziel, and with him three hundred males. Of the sons also of Adin, Ebed the son of Jonathan, and with him fifty males. And of the sons of Elam, Jeshiah the son of Athaliah, and with him seventy males. And of the sons of Shephatiah, Zebediah, the son of Michael, and with him fourscore males. Of the sons of Joab, Obadiah, the son of Jehiel, and with him two hundred and eighteen males. And of the sons of Shalomith, the sons of Josephiah, and with him an hundred and threescore males. And of the sons of Bebai, Zechariah, the son of Bebai, and with him twenty and eight males. And of the sons of Asgad, Johanan the son of Hakatan, and with him an hundred and ten males. And of the last sons of Adonikam, whose names are these, Eliphet, Jael, and Shemaiah, and with them three score males. Of the sons also of Bigvi, Uthai, and Zabud, and with them seventy males. And I gathered them together to the river that runneth to Aheva, and there abode we in tents three days. And I viewed the people and the priests, and found there none of the sons of Levi. Then sent I for Eliezer, for Ariel, for Shemaiah, and for Elnathan, and for Jarib, and for Elnathan, and for Nathan, and for Zechariah, and for Meshulam, chief men, also for Joirib, and for Elnathan, men of understanding. And I sent them with commandment unto Edo, the chief at the place Cassiphia, and I told them what they should say unto Edo, and to his brethren the Nathanums at the place Cassiphia, that they should bring unto us ministers for the house of our God. And by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding, of the sons of Melai, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, and Sherebiah with his sons and his brethren, eighteen, and Hashabiah, and with him Jeshaiah of the sons of Merari, his brethren and their sons, twenty. Also of the Nathanims, whom David and the princes had appointed for the service of the Levites, two hundred and twenty Nathanims, all of them were expressed by name. Then I proclaimed a fast there, at the river of Aheva, that we might afflict ourselves before our God to seek of him a right way for us, and for our little ones, and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, the hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted, 
and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. Then I separated twelve of the chief of the priests, Sherebiah, Heshebiah, and ten of their brethren with them, and weighed unto them the silver and the gold and the vessels, even the offering of the house of our God, which the king and his counsellors and his lords and all Israel there present had offered. I even weighed unto their hand six hundred and fifty talents of silver, and silver vessels an hundred talents, and of gold an hundred talents, also twenty basins of gold, of a thousand drams, and two vessels of fine copper, precious as gold. And I said unto them, Ye are holy unto the Lord, the vessels are holy also, and the silver and the gold are a free will offering unto the Lord God of your fathers. Watch ye, and keep them, until ye weigh them before the chief of the priests and the Levites, and chief of the fathers of Israel, at Jerusalem, in the chambers of the house of the Lord. So took the priests and the Levites the weight of the silver and the gold and the vessels to bring them to Jerusalem unto the house of our God. Then we departed from the river of Ahava on the twelfth day of the first month to go unto Jerusalem. And the hand of our God was upon us, and he delivered us from the hand of the enemy, and of such as lay in wait by the way. And we came to Jerusalem, and abode there three days. Now on the fourth day was the silver and the gold and the vessels weighed in the house of our God, by the hand of Merimoth, the son of Uriah the priest. And with him was Eliezer, the son of Phinehas, and with them was Josabad, the son of Jeshua, and Noadiah, the son of Benui, Levites, by number and by weight of every one. And all the weight was written at that time. Also the children of those that had been carried away, which were come out of the captivity, offered burnt offerings unto the God of Israel, twelve bullocks for all Israel, ninety and six rams, seventy and seven lambs, twelve he-goats for a sin offering. All this was a burnt offering unto the Lord. And they delivered the king's commissions unto the king's lieutenants, and to the governors on this side the river, and they furthered the people, and the house of God. Chapter 9 Now when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel, and the priests, and the Levites, have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers hath been chief in this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle, and plucked off the hair of my head and of my beard, and sat down, astonished. Then were assembled unto me every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel, because of the transgression of those that had been carried away. And I sat astonied until the evening sacrifice. And at the evening sacrifice I arose up from my heaviness, and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God, and said, O oh my God, I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to thee, my God, for our iniquities are increased over our head, and our trespasses grown up unto the heavens. Since the days of our fathers have we been in a great trespass unto this day, and for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hands of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, and to a spoil and to confusion of face, as it is this day. And now, for a little space, grace hath been shewed from the Lord our God, to leave us a remnant to escape, and to give us a nail in his holy place, 
that our God may lighten our eyes, and give us a little reviving in our bondage. For we were bondmen, yet our God hath not forsaken us in our bondage, but hath extended mercy unto us, in the sight of the kings of Persia, to give us a reviving, to set up the house of our God, and to repair the desolations thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. And now, O our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded by thy servants, the prophets, saying, The land unto which ye go to possess it is an unclean land with the filthiness of the people of the lands, with their abominations, which have filled it from one end to another with their uncleanness. Now therefore give not your daughters unto their sons, neither take their daughters unto your sons, nor seek their peace or their wealth for ever, that ye might be strong, and eat the good of the land, and leave it for an inheritance to your children for ever. And after all that is come upon us, for our evil deeds, and for our great trespass, seeing that thou, our God, hast punished us less than our iniquities deserve, and hast given us such deliverance as this, should we again break thy commandments, and join in affinity with the people of these abominations? Wouldst not thou be angry with us, till thou hadst consumed us, so that there should be no remnant, nor escaping? O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous, for we remain yet escaped, as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our trespasses, for we cannot stand before thee because of this. Chapter 10 Now, when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him, out of Israel, a very great congregation of men and women and children, for the people wept very sore. And Shechaniah, the son of Jehiel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God, and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. Now, therefore, let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives, and such as are born of them, according to the counsel of my Lord, and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage, and do it. Then arose Ezra, and made the chief priests, the Levites, and all Israel, to swear that they should do according to this word. And they swear. Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God, and went into the chamber of Johanan, the son of Eliashib. And when he came thither, he did eat no bread, nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. And they made proclamation throughout Judah and Jerusalem unto all the children of the captivity, that they should gather themselves together unto Jerusalem, and that whosoever would not come within three days, according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited, and himself separated from the congregation of those that had been carried away. Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together unto Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month, on the twentieth day of the month. And all the people sat in the street of the house of God, trembling because of this matter, and for the great rain. And Ezra the priest stood up, and said unto them, Ye have transgressed, and have taken strange wives, to increase the trespass of Israel. 
Now, therefore, make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers, and do his pleasure, and separate yourselves from the people of the land, and from the strange wives. Then all the congregation answered, and said with a loud voice, As thou hast said, so must we do. But the people are many, and it is a time of much rain, and we are not able to stand without. Neither is this a work of one day or two, for we are many that have transgressed in this thing. Let now our rulers of all the congregation stand, and let all them which have taken strange wives in our cities come at appointed times, and with them the elders of every city, and the judges thereof, until the fierce wrath of our God for this matter be turned from us. Only Jonathan, the son of Asahel, and Jehaziah, the son of Tikva, were employed about this matter, and Meshulam and Shabbathai, the Levite, helped them. And the children of the captivity did so. And Ezra the priest, with certain chief of the fathers, after the house of their fathers, and all of them by their names, were separated, and sat down in the first day of the tenth month to examine the matter. And they made an end with all the men that had taken strange wives by the first day of the first month. And among the sons of the priests there were found that had taken strange wives, namely, of the sons of Jeshua, the son of Josadic, and his brethren, Messiah, and Eliezer, and Jareb, and Gedaliah. And they gave their hands that they would put away their wives, and, being guilty, they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass. And of the sons of Imer, Hinani and Zebediah, and of the sons of Harim, Messiah, and Elijah, and Shemaiah, and Jehiel, and Uzziah, and of the sons of Pashur, Elionai, Messiah, Ishmael, Nathaniel, Jazabad, and Elasa. Also of the Levites, Jazabad, and, and Shimei, and Keleiah, the same as Kelita, Pethahiah, Judah, and Eliezer. Of the singers also, Eliashib, and of the porters, Shalom, and Telem, and Uri. Moreover, of Israel. Of the sons of Parash, Ramiah, and Jeziah, and Malchiah, and Maiamin, and Eleazar, and Melchijah, and Benaiah. And of the sons of Elam, Metaniah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, and Abdi, and Jeremoth, and Eliah. And of the sons of Zatu, Elioni, Eliashib, Metaniah, and Jeremoth, and Zebad, and Aziza. Of the sons also of Bibai, Jehohanan, Hananiah, Zebai, and Athli. And of the sons of Benai, Meshulam, Maluk, and Adeiah, Jashub, and Sheel, and Ramoth. And of the sons of Pehath Moab, Edna, and Chelal, Benaiah, Meseiah, Mataniah, Bezalel, and Benuai, and Manasseh. And of the sons of Harim, Eliezer, Eshijah, Malchiah, Shemaiah, Shimeon, Benjamin, Maluk, and Shemariah. Of the sons of Hashum, Matani, Metatha, Zebad, Eliphalet, Jeremiah, Manasseh, and Shimei. Of the sons of Benai, Madai, Amram, and Uel, Benaiah, Bedeah, Chelu, Veniah, Merimoth, Elishib, Mataniah, Metani, and Jeasau, and Benai, and Binuai, Shimei, and Shelemiah, and Nathan, and Adiah, Machnedibai, Sheshai, Sherai, Azareel, and Shelemiah, Shemariah, Shalom, Amariah, and Joseph. Of the sons of Nebo, Jael, Atathia, Zibad, Zibina, Jeddo, and Joel, Benaiah. All these had taken strange wives, and some of them had wives by whom they had children. End of section 47
Section 48 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Nehemiah, chapters 1 to 13. This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta. Chapter 1. The Words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah. And it came to pass in the month Chislev, in the twentieth year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass, when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days, and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him, and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive, and thine eyes open, that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel, thy servants. And confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I beseech thee, the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, saying, If ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye turn unto me, and keep my commandments, and do them, though there were of you cast out unto the uttermost part of the heaven, yet will I gather them from thence, and will bring them unto the place that I have chosen to set my name there. Now these are thy servants and thy people, which thou hast redeemed by thy great power and by thy strong hand. O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thine ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant, and to the prayer of thy servants who desire to fear thy name, and prosper, I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For... I was the king's cup-bearer. Chapter 2 And it came to pass, in the month Nisan, in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that wine was before him, and I took up the wine and gave it unto the king. Now I had not been before time sad in his presence. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid, and said unto the king, Let the king live for ever. Why should not my countenance be sad, when the city, the place of my father's sepulchres, lieth waste, and the gates thereof are consumed with fire? Then the king said unto me, For what dost thou make request? So I prayed to the God of heaven, and I said unto the king, If it please the king, and if thy servant have found favour in thy sight, that thou wouldst send me unto Judah, unto the city of my father's sepulchres, that I may build it. And the king said unto me, the queen also sitting by him, For how long shall thy journey be, and when wilt thou return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Moreover I said unto the king, If it please the king, let letters be given me to the governors beyond the river, that they may convey me over till I come into Judah. And a letter unto Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gate of the palace, which appertained to the house, and for the wall of the city, and for the house that I shall enter into. And the king granted me, according to the good hand of my God upon me. 
Then I came to the governors beyond the river, and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me. When Sanballat the Horonite, and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. So I came to Jerusalem, and was there three days. And I arose in the night, I and some few men with me. Neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night, by the gate of the valley, even before the dragon well, and to the dung-port, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down, and the gates thereof were consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gate of the fountain, and to the king's pool, but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then I went up in the night by the brook, and viewed the wall, and turned back, and entered by the gate of the valley. So I returned, and the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did. Neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. But when Sanballat the Horonite, and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn, and despised us, and said, What is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? And answered I them, and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we, his servants, will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Chapter 3 Then Eliashib, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and they builded the sheep gate. They sanctified it, and set up the doors of it. Even unto the tower of Mea they sanctified it, unto the tower of Hananiel. And next unto him builded the men of Jericho, and next to them builded Zachor the son of Imri. But the fish gate did the sons of Hassaneah build, who also laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Merimoth the son of Urisha, the son of Koz. And next to them repaired Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, the son of Meshezbiel. And next unto him repaired Zadok, the son of Bena. And next to them the Tekoites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of the Lord. Moreover the old gate repaired Jehoiada, the son of Peseah, and Meshulam, the son of Besodeiah. They laid the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Melatia the Gibeonite, and Jadon the Moronathite, the men of Gibeon, and of Mizpah, unto the throne of the governor on this side of the river. Next unto him repaired Uziel, the son of Harheya, of the goldsmiths. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of one of the apothecaries. And they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. And next unto them repaired Rephaia, the son of Hur, the ruler of the half-part of Jerusalem. And next unto them repaired Jedeiah, the son of Harumaph, even over against his house. And next unto him repaired Hatush, the son of Hashabniah. Melchijah, the son of Harim, and Hashub, the son of Pehath Moab, repaired the other piece, and the tower of the furnaces. And next unto him repaired Shalom, the son of Halohesh, the ruler of the half-part of Jerusalem he and his daughters. The valley gate repaired Hanun, and the inhabitants of Zanoah. 
they built it, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and a thousand cubits on the wall, unto the dung gate. But the dung gate repaired Malchiah, the son of Rechab, the ruler of part of Bethacharim. He built it, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. But the gate of the fountain repaired Shalun, the son of Kalhosa, the ruler of part of Mizpah. He built it, and covered it, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof, and the wall of the pool of Siloa, by the king's garden, and unto the stairs that go down from the city of David. After him repaired Nehemiah, the son of Azbuk, the ruler of the half-part of beth Zur, unto the place over against the sepulchres of David, and to the pool that was made, and unto the house of the mighty. After him repaired the Levites, Rehum the son of Benai. Next unto him repaired Hashabiah, the ruler of the half-part of Keilah, in his part. After them repaired their brethren, Bevai the son of Henadad, the ruler of the half-part of Keilah. And next to him repaired Ezer, the son of Jeshua, the ruler of Mizpah. Another piece over against the going up to the armory, at the turning of the wall. After him, Baruch, the son of Zabai, earnestly repaired the other piece, from the turning of the wall unto the door of the house of Eliashib, the high priest. After him repaired Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Koz, another piece, from the door of the house of Eliashib, even to the end of the house of Eliashib. And after him repaired the priests, the men of the plain. After him repaired Benjamin and Hashub over against their house. After him repaired Azariah, the son of Masaiah, the son of Ananiah, by his house. After him repaired Benuai, the son of Henadad, another piece, from the house of Azariah, unto the turning of the wall, even unto the corner. Palal, the son of Uzai, over against the turning of the wall, and the tower which lieth out from the king's high house, that was built by the court of the prison. After him, Pedaiah, the son of Parash. Moreover, the Nathanims dwelt in Ophel, unto the place over against the water gate toward the east, and the lower that lieth out. After them, the Tekawites repaired another piece, over against the great tower that lieth out, even unto the wall of Ophel. From above the horse gate repaired the priests, every one over against his house. After them repaired Zadok, the son of Emer, over against his house. After him repaired also Shemaiah, the son of Shechaniah, the keeper of the east gate. After him repaired Hananiah, the son of Shelemiah, and Hanun, the sixth son of Zalaph, another piece. After him repaired Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, over against his chamber. After him repaired Malchiah, the goldsmith's son, unto the place of the Nathanims, and of the merchants, over against the gate Mephked, and to the going up of the corner. And between the going up of the corner unto the sheep gate repaired the goldsmiths and the merchants. Chapter 4 But it came to pass, that when Sanballat heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth, and took great indignation, and mocked the Jews. And he spake before his brethren and the army of Samaria, and said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. Hear, O our God, for we are despised, and turn their reproach upon their own head, and give them for a prey in the land of captivity, and cover not their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out from before thee, for they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof for the people had a mind to work. But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth, 
and conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem, and to hinder it. Nevertheless we made our prayer unto our God, and set a watch against them day and night because of them. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversaries said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. And it came to pass, that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, From all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Therefore set I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked up, and rose up, and said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your houses. And it came to pass, when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. And it came to pass from that time forth, that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the habergeons, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah, they which builded on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one of his hands wrought in the work, and with the other hand held a weapon. For the builders, every one, had a sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, The work is great and large, and we are separated upon the wall, one far from another. In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us. Our God shall fight for us. So we laboured in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise at the same time said I unto the people, Let every one with his servant Lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night there may be a guard to us, and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that every one put them off for washing. Chapter 5 And there was a great cry of the people, and of their wives, against their brethren, the Jews, for there were that said, We, our sons and our daughters, are many. Therefore we take up corn for them, that we may eat and live. Some also there were that said, We have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses, that we might buy corn because of the dearth. There were also that said, We have borrowed money for the king's tribute, and that upon our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their brethren. And lo, we bring into bondage our sons and daughters to be servants, and some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. Neither is it in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. And I was very angry when I heard their cry, and these words, that I consulted with myself, and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers, and said unto them, Ye exact usury, every one of his brother and I set a great assembly against them, and I said unto them, We, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen, and will ye even sell your brethren, or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace, and found nothing to answer. Also I said, It is not good that ye do Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God, because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? 
I, likewise, and my brethren and my servants, might exact of them money and corn? I pray you, let us leave off this usury. Restore, I pray you, to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive-yards, and their houses. Also the hundredth part of the money, and of the corn, the wine, and the oil, that ye exact of them. Then said they, We will restore them, and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests, and took an oath of them, that they should do according to this promise. Also I shook my lap, and said, So God shake out every man from his house, and from his labour, that performeth not this promise. Even thus be he shaken out and emptied. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the twentieth year, even unto the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes the king, that is, twelve years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. But the former governors that had been before me were chargeable unto the people, and had taken of them bread and wine, besides forty shekels of silver. Yea, even their servants bear rule over the people. But so did not I, because of the fear of God. Yea, also I continued in the work of this wall. Neither bought we any land, and all my servants were gathered thither unto the work. Moreover, there were at my table an hundred and fifty of the Jews and rulers, beside those that came unto us from among the heathen that are about us. Now that which was prepared for me daily was one ox and six choice sheep. Also fowls were prepared for me, and once in ten days store of all sorts of wine. Yet for all this required not I the bread of our governor, because the bondage was heavy upon this people. Think upon me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. Chapter 6 Now it came to pass, when Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies, heard that I had builded the wall, and that there was no breach left therein, though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sanballat and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Anno. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease, whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sanballat, his servant, unto me, in like manner, the fifth time, with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words, and thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah. And now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. Then I sent unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. For they all made us afraid, saying, their hands shall be weakened from the work, that it be not done. Now, therefore, O God, strengthen my hands. Afterward I came unto the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mehetabiel, who was shut up. And he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple. For they will come to slay thee, yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. And I said, Should such a man as I flee, and who is there that, being as I am, would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And lo, I perceived that God had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me 
for Tobiah and son Balat had hired him. Therefore he was hired, that I should be afraid, and do so, and sin, and that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. My God, think thou upon Tobiah and son Balat, according to these their works, and on the prophetess Noadiah, and the rest of the prophets, that would have put me in fear. So the wall was finished in the twenty and fifth day of the month Elul, in fifty and two days, and it came to pass that when all our enemies heard thereof, and all the heathens that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Moreover, in those days the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him, because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Era, and his son Johanan had taken the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berechiah. Also they reported his good deeds before me, and uttered my words to him, and Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. Chapter 7 now it came to pass, when the wall was built, and I had set up the doors, and the porters, and the singers, and the Levites were appointed, that I gave my brother Hanani, and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem, for he was a faithful man, and feared God above many. And I said unto him, Let not the gates of Jerusalem be opened, until the sun be hot, and while they stand by, let them shut the doors, and bar them and appoint watches of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, every one in his watch, and every one to be over against his house. Now the city was large and great, but the people were few therein, and the houses were not builded. And my God put into mine heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people, that they might be reckoned by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of them, which came up at the first, and found written therein, these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those that had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away, and came again to Jerusalem and to Judah, every one unto his city, who came with Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramiah, Nehemani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispereth, Bigvi, Nahum, Bena. The number, I say, of the men of the people of Israel, was this. The children of Parash, two thousand and hundred seventy and two. The children of Shephatiah, three hundred seventy and two. The children of Ara, six hundred fifty and two. The children of Pehath Moab, of the children of Jeshua and Joab, two thousand and eight hundred and eighteen. The children of Elam, a thousand two hundred fifty and four. The children of Zatu, eight hundred forty and five. The children of Zekai, seven hundred and three score. The children of Binuai, six hundred forty and eight. The children of Bibai, six hundred twenty and eight. The children of Asgad, two thousand three hundred twenty and two. The children of Adonikam, six hundred three score and seven. The children of Bigvi, two thousand three score and seven. The children of Aden, six hundred fifty and five. The children of Ater, of Hezekiah, ninety and eight. The children of Hashum, three hundred twenty and eight. The children of Bezai, three hundred twenty and four. The children of Harif, an hundred and twelve. The children of Gibeon, ninety and five. The men of Bethlehem and Netophah, an hundred fourscore and eight. The men of Anathoth, an hundred twenty and eight. The men of Bethazmaveth, forty and two. The men of Kirjath Jerim, Kephira and Beeroth, seven hundred forty and three. The men of Ramah and Gaba, six hundred twenty and one. The men of Michmas, an hundred twenty and two. The men of Bethel and Ai, an hundred twenty and three. The men of the other Nebo, fifty and two. The children of the other Elam, a thousand two hundred fifty and four. The children of Harim, three hundred and twenty. The children of Jericho, three hundred forty and five. The children of Lod, Hadid and Ono, seven hundred twenty and one. The children of Senea, three thousand nine hundred and thirty. The priests, the children of Jedaiah, of the house of Jeshua, nine hundred seventy and three. The children of Immer, a thousand fifty and two. The children of Pashur, a thousand two hundred forty and seven. 
The Children of Harim, a thousand and seventeen. The Levites. The Children of Jeshua, of Kadmiel, and of the Children of Hodeva, seventy and four. The Singers. The Children of Asaph, an hundred forty and eight. The Porters. The Children of Shalom, the Children of Ater, the Children of Talman, the Children of Akub, the Children of Hatita, the Children of Shobai, an hundred thirty and eight. The Nathanims. The children of Ziha, the children of Hashufa, the children of Tebeoth, the children of Keros, the children of Sia, the children of Padon, the children of Lebana, the children of Hageba, the children of Shalmai, the children of Hanan, the children of Gidel, the children of Gehar, the children of Reiaya, the children of Rezin, the children of Nakoda, the children of Gazam, the children of Uzzah, the children of Phasea, the children of Bise, the children of Meunim, the children of Nephesheshim, the children of Bakbuk, the children of Hakufa, the children of Harhor, the children of Baslith, the children of Mehida, the children of Harsha, the children of Barkos, the children of Sisera, the children of Tema, the children of Nisaiah, the children of Hattipha, the children of Solomon's servants, the children of Sotai, the children of Sophereth, the children of Perida, the children of Jaela, the children of Darkon, the children of Gedel, the children of Shephatiah, the children of Hatil, the children of Pokereth of Zebaim, the children of Ammon. All the Nathanims and the children of Solomon's servants were three hundred ninety and two. And these were they which went up also from Telmela, Telharesha, Jarub, Adon, and Immer. But they could not shew their father's house, nor their seed, whether they were of Israel. The children of Deleiah, the children of Tobiah, the children of Echoda, six hundred forty and two. And of the priests, the children of Hebeiah, the children of Kaz, the children of Barzillai, which took one of the daughters of Barzillai the Gileadite to wife, and was called after their name. These sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but it was not found. Therefore were they, as polluted, put from the priesthood. And the Tirshatha said unto them, that they should not eat of the most holy things, till there stood up a priest with Urim and Thummim. The whole congregation together was forty and two thousand three hundred and three score, beside their manservants and their maidservants, of whom there were seven thousand three hundred thirty and seven, and they had two hundred forty and five singing men and singing women, their horses seven hundred thirty and six, their mules two hundred forty and five, their camels four hundred thirty and five, six thousand seven hundred and twenty asses and some of the chief of the fathers gave unto the work. The Tirshatha gave to the treasure a thousand drams of gold, fifty basins, five hundred and thirty priests' garments. And some of the chief of the fathers gave to the treasure of the work twenty thousand drams of gold, and two thousand and two hundred pounds of silver. And that which the rest of the people gave was twenty thousand drams of gold, and two thousand pounds of silver, and threescore and seven priests' garments. So the priests, and the Levites, and the porters, and the singers, and some of the people, and the Nathanims, and all Israel, dwelt in their cities. And when the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. Chapter 8 And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding, upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate, from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose, and beside him stood Mattathiah, and Shema, and Aniah, and Urijah, and Hilkiah, and Maaseiah, on his right hand, and on his left hand Pedaiah, and Mishael, and Malchiah, and Heshum, and Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up, and Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also, 
Jeshua and Benai and Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbathai, Hodijah, Maaseiah, Kelita, Azariah, Jozebad, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites, caused the people to understand the law. And the people stood in their place. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly, and gave the sense, and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, which is Tirshatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites stilled all the people, saying, Hold your peace, for the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink, and to send portions, and to make great mirth, because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, unto Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. And they found written in the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths in the feast of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount, and fetch olive branches, and pine branches, and myrtle branches, and palm branches, and branches of thick trees, to make booths, as it is written. So the people went forth and brought them, and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God, and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths, and sat under the booths. For since the days of Jeshua, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Israel done so. And there was very great gladness. Also, day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of God, and they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly, according unto the manner. Chapter 9 Now in the twenty and fourth day of this month the children of Israel were assembled with fasting and with sackcloths, and earth upon them. And the seed of Israel separated themselves from all strangers, and stood and confessed their sins, and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place, and read in the book of the law of the Lord their God, one fourth part of the day, and another fourth part they confessed, and worshipped the Lord their God. Then stood up upon the stairs of the Levites, Jeshua and Benai, Kadmiel, Shebaniah, Bunai, Sherebiah, Benai, and Chenani, and cried with a loud voice unto the Lord their God. Then the Levites, Jeshua and Kadmiel, Benai, Hashabniah, Hashabniah, Sherebiah, Hodijah, Shebaniah, and Pethahiah, said, Stand up and bless the Lord your God for ever and ever, and blessed be thy glorious name, which is exalted above all blessing and praise. Thou, even thou, art Lord alone. Thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host, the earth and all things that are therein, the seas and all that is therein, and thou preservest them all, and the host of heaven worshippeth thee. Thou art the Lord, the God who didst choose Abram, and broughtest him forth out of Ur of the Chaldees, and gavest him the name of Abraham, and foundest his heart faithful before thee, and madest a covenant with him to give the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Jebusites, and the Girgashites, to give it, I say, to his seed, and hast performed thy works, for thou art righteous, and didst see the affliction of our fathers in Egypt, 
and heardest their cry by the Red Sea, and shewedst s- and shewedst signs and wonders upon Pharaoh, and on all his servants, and on all the people of his land, for thou knewest that they dealt proudly against them. So didst thou get thee a name, as it is this day, and thou didst divide the sea before them, so that they went through the midst of the sea, on the dry land, and their persecutors thou threwest in the deeps, as a stone, into the mighty waters. Moreover, thou leddest them in the day by a cloudy pillar, and in the night by a pillar of fire, to give them light in the way wherein they should go. Thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai, and spakest with them from heaven, and gavest them right judgments and true laws, good statutes and commandments, and madest known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commandedst them precepts, statutes, and laws, by the hand of Moses thy servant, and gavest them bread from heaven for their hunger, and broughtest forth water for them out of the rock for their thirst, and promisedst them that they should go in to possess the land which thou hadst sworn to give them. But they and our fathers dealt proudly, and hardened their necks, and hearkened not to thy commandments, and refused to obey. Neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks, and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a god ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and forsookest them not. Yea, when they had made them a molten calf, and said, This is thy god that brought thee up out of Egypt, and had wrought great provocations, yet thou in thy manifold mercies forsookest them not in the wilderness. The pillar of the cloud departed not from them by day, to lead them in the way, neither the pillar of fire by night to shew them light, and the way wherein they should go. Thou gavest also thy good spirit to instruct them, and withheldest not thy manna from their mouth, and gavest them water for their thirst. Yea, forty years didst thou sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old, and their feet swelled not. Moreover, thou gavest them kingdoms and nations, and didst divide them into corners. So they possessed the land of Sihon, and the land of the king of Heshbon, and the land of Og, king of Bashan. Their children also multipliedst, thou as the stars of heaven, and brought them into the land concerning which thou hadst promised to their fathers that they should go in to possess it. So the children went in and possessed the land, and thou subdued'st before them the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, and gave them into their hands with their kings and the people of the land, that they might do with them as they would. And they took strong cities and a fat land and possessed houses full of goods, wells digged, vineyards and olive yards and fruit trees in abundance. So they did eat, and were filled and became fat, and delighted themselves in thy great goodness. Nevertheless they were disobedient, and rebelled against thee, and cast thy law behind their backs, and slew thy prophets which testified against them, to turn them to thee. And they wrought great provocations." Therefore thou deliveredst them into the hand of their enemies, who vexed them. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors, who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. But after they had rest, they did evil again before thee. Therefore leftest thou them in the land of their enemies, so that they had the dominion over them. Yet when they returned and cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven, and many times didst thou deliver them according to thy mercies, and testifiedst against them, that thou mightest bring them again unto thy law. Yet they dealt proudly, and hearkened not unto thy commandments, but sinned against thy judgments, which, if a man do, he shall live in them and withdrew the shoulder, and hardened their necks, and would not hear. Yet many years didst thou forbear them, 
and testifiedst against them by the spirit in thy prophets yet would they not give ear therefore gavest thou them into the hand of the people of the lands nevertheless for thy great mercy's sake thou didst not utterly consume them nor forsake them for thou art a gracious and merciful god now therefore our god the great the mighty and the terrible god who keepest covenant and mercy let not all the trouble seem little before thee that hath come upon us on our kings on our princes and on our priests and on our prophets and on our fathers and on all thy people since the time of the kings of assyria unto this day howbeit thou art just in all that is brought upon us for thou hast done right but we have done wickedly neither have our kings our princes our priests nor our fathers kept the law nor hearkened unto thy commandments and thy testimonies wherewith thou didst testify against them for they have not served thee in their kingdom and in thy great goodness that thou gavest them and in the large and fat land which thou gavest before them neither turned they from their wicked works behold we are servants this day and for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof behold we are servants in it and it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins also they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure and we are in great distress and because of all this we make a sure covenant and write it and our princes levites and priests seal unto it now those that sealed were nehemiah the tirshatha the son of hakaliah and zikaijah seraiah azariah jeremiah pashur amariah malkaijah hatush shebaniah maluk harim meramoth obadiah daniel kinnathan baruch meshulam abijah mejamin meziah bilgai shemaiah these were the priests and the levites both jeshua the son of azaniah binuai of the sons of hinadad cadmiel and their brethren shebaniah hodijah kalita peleiah hanan mika rehab hashabiah Zakur, Sherebiah, Shebaniah, Hodijah, Benai, Benainu, the chief of the people, Parash, Pehath Moab, Elam, Sethu, Benai, Bunai, Asgad, Bibai, Adonijah, Bigvai, Aden, Ater, Hizkaijah, Azur, Hodijah, Heshum, Bizai, Harif, Anithoth, Nebai, Megpiesh, Meshulam, Hazir, Meshezbiel, Zadok, Jedua, Pelitia, Hanan, Enaya, Hoshea, Hananiah, Heshub, Elohesh, Peliha, Shobek, Rehum, Hashebna, Measeiah, and Ahijah, Hanan, Anan, Maluk, Harim, Bena. And the rest of the people, the priests and the Levites, the porters, the singers, the Nathanims, and all they that had separated themselves from the people of the lands unto the law of God, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, every one having knowledge and having understanding they clave to their brethren their nobles and entered into a curse and into an oath to walk in god's law which was given by moses the servant of god and to observe and do all the commandments of the lord our god and his judgments and his statutes and that we would not give our daughters unto the people of the land nor take their daughters for our sons and if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the sabbath day to sell that we would not buy it of them on the sabbath or on the holy day and that we would leave the seventh year and the exaction of every debt also we have made ordinances for us to charge ourselves yearly with a third part of a shekel for the service of the house of our god for the shewbread and for the continual meat offering and for the continual burnt offering of the sabbaths of the new moons for the set feasts and for the holy things and for the sin offerings to make an atonement for israel and for all the work of the house of our god and we cast the lots among the priests the levites and the people for the wood offering 
to bring it into the house of our God, after the houses of our fathers, at times appointed year by year, to burn upon the altar of the Lord our God, as it is written in the law, and to bring the first fruits of our ground, and the first fruits of all fruit of all trees, year by year, unto the house of the Lord. Also the firstborn of our sons, and of our cattle, as it is written in the law, and the firstlings of our herds and of our flocks, to bring to the house of our God, unto the priests that minister in the house of our God. And that we should bring the first fruits of our dough and our offerings, and the fruit of all manner of trees, of wine and of oil, unto the priests, to the chambers of the house of our God, and the tithes of our ground, unto the Levites, that the same Levites might have the tithes in all the cities of our village. And the priest, the son of Aaron, shall be with the Levites, when the Levites take tithes. And the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithes unto the house of our God, to the chambers, and to the treasure house. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of the corn, of the new wine, and the oil, unto the chambers, where are the vessels of the sanctuary, and the priests that minister, and the porters and the singers. And we will not forsake the house of our God. Chapter 11 And the rulers of all the people dwelt at Jerusalem. The rest of the people also cast lots to bring one of ten to dwell in Jerusalem, the holy city, and nine parts to dwell in other cities. And the people blessed all the men that willingly offered themselves to dwell in Jerusalem. Now these are the chief of the province that dwelt in Jerusalem, but in the cities of Judah dwelt every one in his possession in their cities, to wit, Israel, the priests, and the Levites, and the Nathanims, and the children of Solomon's servants. And at Jerusalem dwelt certain of the children of Judah, and of the children of Benjamin, of the children of Judah, Athaiah, the son of Uzziah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Mahalalel, of the children of Perez, and Maaseiah, the son of Baruch, the son of Colose, the son of Hezeiah, the son of Edeiah, the son of Joiarib, the son of Zechariah, the son of Shaloni. All the sons of Perez that dwelt at Jerusalem were four hundred threescore and eight valiant men. And these are the sons of Benjamin, Salu, the son of Meshulam, the son of Joed, the son of Pedeiah, the son of Koleiah, the son of Maaseiah, the son of Ethael, the son of Jeseiah, and after him Gabai, Selai, nine hundred twenty and eight. And Joel, the son of Zichri, was their overseer, and Judah, the son of Senua, was second over the city. The priests, Jedeiah, the son of Joiarib, Jachin. Seraiah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Meshulam, the son of Zadok, the son of Merioth, the son of Ahitub, was the ruler of the house of God. And their brethren that did the work of the house were eight hundred twenty and two. And Adiah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Peleiah, the son of Amzai, the son of Zechariah, the son of Pashur, the son of Malchiah. And his brethren, chief of the fathers, two hundred and forty-two. And Amashai, the son of Azariel, the son of Ehesai, the son of Meshilimoth, the son of Imer, and their brethren, mighty men of valor, an hundred twenty and eight, and their overseer was Zebdiel, the son of one of the great men. Also of the Levites, Shemaiah, the son of Hashub, the son of Ezraikim, the son of Heshebiah, the son of Bunai, and Shabbathai and Jezebad, of the chief of the Levites, had the oversight of the outward business of the house of God. And Metaniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zebdi, the son of Asaph, was the principal to begin the thanksgiving in prayer. And Bakbukiah, the second among his brethren. And Abda, the son of Shemua, the son of Galal, the son of Jeduthun. All the Levites in the holy city were two hundred fourscore and four. Moreover, the porters, Akub, Talman, and their brethren that kept the gates were an hundred seventy and two. And the residue of Israel, of the priests and the Levites, were in all the cities of Judah, every one in his inheritance. But the Nathanims dwelt in Ophel, and Zihah and Gisba were over the Nathanims. 
the overseer also of the Levites at Jerusalem was Uzai, the son of Bani, the son of Heshabiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Micah. Of the sons of Asaph, the singers were over the business of the house of God. For it was the king's commandment concerning them, that a certain portion should be for the singers, due for every day. And Pethahiah, the son of Meshazabiel, of the children of Zerah, the son of Judah, was at the king's hand in all matters concerning the people. And for the villages, with their fields, some of the children of Judah dwelt at Kirjath Arba, and in the villages thereof, and in Dibon, and in the villages thereof, and at Chekabziel, and in the villages thereof, and at Jeshua, and at Molida, and at Bethphelet, and at Hazar Shual, and at Beersheba, and in the villages thereof, and at Ziklag, and at Makona, and in the villages thereof, and at in Rimon, and at Zereah, and at Jarmuth, Zanoa, Adulam, and in their villages, at Lachish, and the fields thereof, at Azekah, and in the villages thereof. And they dwelt from Beersheba unto the valley of Hinnom. The children also of Benjamin, from Geba, dwelt at Michmash, and Aisha, and Bethel, and in their villages. And at Anathoth, Nob, Ananiah, Hazor, Ramah, Gitaim, Hadid, Zeboam, Nebalat, Lod, and Ono, the valley of craftsmen. And of the Levites were divisions in Judah and in Benjamin. Chapter 12 now these are the priests and the Levites that went up with Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, Seraiah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Amariah, Maluk, Hattush, Shechaniah, Rehum, Merimoth, Edo, Genetho, Abijah, Maaman, Maadiah, Bilga, Shemaiah, and Joirib, Jedeiah, Salu, Emok, Hilkiah, Jedeiah. These were the chief of the priests and of their brethren in the days of Jeshua. Moreover, the Levites, Jeshua, Binuai, Cadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Mataniah, which was over the thanksgiving, he and his brethren. Also Bakbukiah and Unai, their brethren, were over against them in the watches. And Jeshua begat Joachim, Joachim also begat Eliashib, and Eliashib begat Joiada. And Joiada begat Jonathan, and Jonathan begat Jadua. And in the days of Joiakim were priests, the chief of the fathers, of Seraiah, Mariah, of Jeremiah, Hananiah, of Ezra, Meshulam, of Amariah, Jehohanan, of Malaiku, Jonathan, of Shebaniah, Joseph, of Harim, Edna, of Mariahoth, Helkiah, of Edo, Zechariah, of Kinnathon, Meshulam, of Abijah, Zikri, of Miniamin, of Modiah, Peltai, of Bilga, Shamua, of Shemaiah, Johanathan, and of Joiarib, Matani, of Jedeiah, Uzai, of Selei, Kelei, of Amok, Eber, of Hilkiah, Hashabiah, of Jedeiah, Nathaniel, the Levites in the days of Eliashib, Joiada and Johanan and Jedua were recorded chief of the fathers, also the priests, to the reign of Darius the Persian. The sons of Levi, the chief of the fathers, were written in the book of the Chronicles, even until the days of Johanan, the son of Eliashib. And the chief of the Levites, Heshabiah, Sherebiah, and Jeshua, the son of Cadmiel, with their brethren over against them, to praise and to give thanks, according to the commandment of David, the man of God, ward over against ward. Mataniah and Bakbuka, Obadiah, Meshulam, Talman, Akub, were porters, keeping the ward at the thresholds of the gates. These were in the days of Joachim, the son of Jeshua, the son of Josedach, and in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and of Ezra, the priest, the scribe. And at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places to bring them to Jerusalem, to keep the dedication with gladness, both with thanksgivings and with singing, with cymbals, psalteries, and with harps. And the sons of the villagers gathered themselves together, both out of the plain country round about Jerusalem, 
and from the village of Netatathai, also from the house of Gilgal, and out of the fields of Geba and Asmaveth, for the singers had builded them villages round about Jerusalem. And the priests and the Levites purified themselves, and purified the people, and the gates, and the wall. Then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall, and appointed two great companies of them that gave thanks, whereof one went on the right hand upon the wall toward the dung gate, and after them went Hoshaiah, and half the princes of Judah, and Azariah, Ezra, and Meshulam, Judah, and Benjamin, and Shemaiah, and Jeremiah and certain of the priest's sons with trumpets, namely Zechariah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Metaniah, the son of Milkaiah, the son of Zachor, the son of Asaph. And his brethren, Shemaiah and Azareel, Melelei, Gelelei, Mei, Nathaniel, and Judah, Hinani, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God, and Ezra the scribe before them. And at the fountain gate which was over against them, they went up by the stairs of the city of David, at the going up of the wall, above the house of David, even unto the water gate eastward. And the other company of them that gave thanks went over against them, and I after them. And the half of the people upon the wall from beyond the tower of the furnaces, even unto the broad wall. And from above the gate of Ephraim, and above the old gate, and above the fish gate, and the tower of Hananiel, and the tower of Meah, even unto the sheep gate. And they stood still in the prison gate. So stood the two companies of them that gave thanks in the house of God. And I and the half of the rulers with me. And the priests, Eliakim, Maaseiah, Menaemin, Micaiah, Elioniah, Zechariah, and Hananiah, with trumpets. And Maaseiah, and Shemaiah, and Eleazar, and Uzai, and Johanan, and Malchisha, and Elam, and Ezer. And all the singers sang loud with Jezrahiah, their overseer. Also that day they offered great sacrifices, and rejoiced. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also, and the children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off, and at that time were some appointed over the chambers for the treasures, for the offerings, for the first fruits, and for the tithes, to gather into them out of the fields of the cities the portions of the law for the priests and Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priests and for the Levites that waited. And both the singers and the porters kept the ward of their god, and the ward of the purification, according to the commandment of David, and of Solomon his son. For in the days of David and Asaph of old they were chief of the singers, and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. And all Israel in the days of Zerubbabel, and in the days of Nehemiah, gave the portions of the singers and the porters every day his portion. And they sanctified holy things unto the Levites, and the Levites sanctified them unto the children of Aaron. Chapter 13 On that day they read in the book of Moses, in the audience of the people, and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God for ever, because they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water, but hired Balaam against them, that he should curse them. Howbeit our God turned the curse into a blessing. Now it came to pass, when they had heard the law, that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. And before this, Eliashib the priest, having the oversight of the chamber of the house of our God, was allied unto Tobiah, and he had prepared for him a great chamber, where aforetime they laid the meat offerings, the frankincense, and the vessels, and the tithes of the corn, the new wine, and the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites, and the singers, and the porters, and the offerings of the priests. But in all this time was not I at Jerusalem, for in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, 
and after certain days obtained I leave of the king. And I came to Jerusalem and understood the evil that Eliashib did for Tobiah, in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. And it grieved me sore. Therefore I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers, and thither brought I again the vessels of the house of God with the meat offering and the frankincense. And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them, for the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled every one to his field. Then contended I with the rulers, and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn, and the new wine, and the oil unto the treasuries. And I made treasurers over the treasuries, Shalemiah the priest, and Zadok the scribe, and of the Levites Pedaiah. And next to them was Hanan the son of Zachor, the son of Mataniah, for they were counted faithful, and their office was to distribute unto their brethren. Remember me, O my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God, and for the offices thereof. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheaves and lading asses, and also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold the victuals. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish in all manner of ware, and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah, and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do, and profane the Sabbath day? Did not your fathers thus, and did not our God bring all this evil upon us, and upon the city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut, and charged that they should not be opened till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set I at the gates, that there should be no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants and sellers of all kind of ware lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. Then I testified against them, and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? If ye do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves, and that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this also, and spare me according to the greatness of my mercy. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod of Ammon and of Moab. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, and could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them, and cursed them, and smote certain of them, and plucked off their hair, and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for yourselves. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him, who was beloved of his God. And God made him king all over Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Shall we then hearken unto you, to do all this great evil, to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives? And one of the sons of Joiada, the son of Eliashib, the high priest, was son law to Sandbalat, the Horonite. Therefore I chased him from me. Remember them, O my God, because they have defiled the priesthood, and the covenant of the priesthood, and of the Levites. Thus cleansed I them from all strangers, and appointed the wards of the priests and of the Levites, every one in his business and for the wood offering at times appointed, and for the first fruits. Remember me, O my God, for good. End of section 48
Section 49 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version. Esther, chapters 1 through 10. This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta. Chapter 1. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus, this is Ahasuerus which reigned from India, even unto Ethiopia, over an hundred and seven and twenty provinces, that in those days, when the king Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan the palace, in the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants, the power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces, being before him, when he shewed the riches of his glorious kingdom, and the honour of his excellent majesty, many days, even an hundred and fourscore days. And when these days were expired, the king made a feast unto all the people that were present in Shushan, the palace, both unto great and small, seven days, in the court of the garden of the king's palace, where were white, green, and blue hangings, fastened with cords of fine linen, and purple to silver rings, and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver, upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another, and royal wine in abundance, according to the state of the king. And the drinking was according to the law. None did compel for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. Also Vashti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house which belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bistha, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abegtha, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal, to shew the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him, then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment, and the next unto him was Karshena, Shethar, Admetha, Tarshish, Maris, Marcina, and Memucan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, which saw the king's face, and which sat the first in the kingdom, what shall we do unto the queen Vashti, according to law, because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains? And Mamukin answered before the king and the princes, Vashti, the queen, hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes, and to all the people that are in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad, unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported, the king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honour, both to great and small. And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Mamukin. For he sent letters into all the king's provinces, into every province according to the writing thereof, 
and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Chapter 2 After these things, when the wrath of King Ahasuerus was appeased, he remembered Vashti, and what she had done, and what was decreed against her. Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, Let there be fair young virgins sought for the king, and let the king appoint officers in all the provinces of his kingdom, that they may gather together all the fair young virgins unto Shushan, the palace, to the house of the women, unto the custody of Hegi, the king's chamberlain, keeper of the women, and let their things for purification be given them. And let the maiden which pleaseth the king be queen instead of Vashti. And the thing pleased the king, and he did so. Now in Shushan the palace there was a certain Jew, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconia, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And he brought up Hadassah, that is, Esther, his uncle's daughter. For she had neither father nor mother, and the maid was fair and beautiful, whom Mordecai, when her father and mother were dead, took for his own daughter. So it came to pass, when the king's commandment and his decree was heard, and when many maidens were gathered together unto Shushan the palace, to the custody of Haggai, that Esther was brought also unto the king's house, to the custody of Haggai, keeper of the women. And the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and he speedily gave her her things for purification, which such things as belonged to her, and seven maidens, which were meet to be given her, out of the king's house. And he preferred her, and her maids, unto the best place of the house of the women. Esther had not shewed her people, nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not shew it. And Mordecai walked every day before the court of the women's house, to know how Esther did, and what should become of her. Now when every maid's turn was come to go in unto King Ahasuerus, after that she had been twelve months, according to the manner of the women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished, to wit, six months with oil of myrrh, and six months with sweet odours, and with other things for the purifying of the women. Then, thus, came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given her to go with her out of the house of the women unto the king's house. In the evening she went, and on the morrow she returned unto the second house of the women, to the custody of Shazgaz, the king's chamberlain, which kept the concubines. She came in unto the king no more, except the king delighted in her, and that she were called by name. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king, she required nothing but what Hegai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. So Esther was taken unto the king Ahasuerus, into his house royal in the tenth month, which is the month Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head, and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast unto all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast, and he made a release to the provinces, and gave gifts according to the state of the king. And 
when the virgins were gathered together the second time. Then Mordecai sat in the king's gate. Esther had not yet shewed her kindred, nor her people, as Mordecai had charged her. For Esther did the commandment of Mordecai, like as when she was brought up with him. In those days, while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamberlains, Bigthan and Teresh, of those which kept the door, were wroth, and sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. And the thing was known to Mordecai, who told it unto Esther the queen. And Esther certified the king thereof in Mordecai's name. And when inquisition was made of the matter, it was found out. Therefore they were both hanged on a tree, and it was written in the book of the Chronicles, before the king. Chapter 3 after these things did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, and advanced him, and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. And all the king's servants that were in the king's gate bowed and reverenced Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Then the king's servants, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, Why transgressest thou the king's commandment? Now it came to pass, when they spake daily unto him, and he hearkened not unto him, that they told Haman to see whether Mordecai's matters would stand, for he had told them that he was a Jew. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. And he thought scorn to lay on Mordecai alone, for they had shewed him the people of Mordecai. Wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. In the first month, that is, the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast pure, that is, the lot, before Haman from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar. And Haman said unto king Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered abroad, and dispersed among the people, in all the provinces of thy kingdom, and their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's laws, Therefore it is not for the king's profit to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed, and I will pay ten thousand talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge of the business, to bring it into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring from his hand, and gave it unto Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite the Jews' enemy. And the king said unto Haman, The silver is given to thee, the people also, to do with them as it seemeth good to thee. Then were the king's scribes called on the thirteenth day of the first month, and there was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants, and to the governors that were over every province, and to the rulers of every people, of every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, in the name of the king Ahasuerus, was it written, and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by posts into all the king's provinces, to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women in one day, even upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, that they should be ready against that day. And the posts went out, being hastened by the king's commandment, 
and the decree was given in Shushan, the palace. And the king and Haman sat down to drink. But the city of Shushan was perplexed. Chapter 4 When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes, and put on sackcloth with ashes, and went out into the midst of the city, and cried with a loud and a bitter cry, and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved, and she sent raiment to clothe Mordecai, and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received it not. Then called Esther for Hatak, one of the king's chamberlains, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai, to know what it was and why it was. So Hatak went forth to Mordecai unto the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay for the king's treasuries, for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Shushan to destroy them, to shew it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him, and to make request before him for her people. And Hatak came and told Esther the words of Mordecai, Again Esther spake unto Hatak, and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king and to the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai Esther's words. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai with this answer. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way, and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Chapter 5 now it came to pass on the third day that Esther put on her royal apparel and stood in the inner court of the king's house over against the king's house. And the king sat upon his royal throne in the royal house over against the gate of the house. And it was so, when the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So... Esther drew near, and touched the top of the scepter. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther, and what is thy request? It shall be even given thee to the half of the kingdom. And Esther answered, If it seem good unto the king, 
let the king and Haman come this day unto the banquet that I have prepared for him. Then the king said, Cause Haman to make haste, that he may do as Esther hath said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. And the king said unto Esther at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request? Even to the half of the kingdom it shall be performed. Then answered Esther and said, My petition and my request is, If I have found favour in the sight of the king, and if it please the king to grant my petition, and to perform my request, let the king and Haman come to the banquet that I shall prepare for them, and I will do to-morrow as the king hath said. Then went Haman forth that day, joyful and with a glad heart. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate, that he stood not up, nor moved for him, he was full of indignation against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman refrained himself. And when he came home, he sent and called for his friends, and Zeresh his wife. And Haman told them of the glory of his riches, and the multitude of his children, and all the things wherein the king had promoted him, and how he had advanced him above the princes and servants of the king. Haman said, moreover, Yea, Esther the queen did let no man come in with the king unto the banquet that she had prepared, but myself, and to-morrow am I invited unto her also with the king. Yet all this availeth me nothing, so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Then said Zeresh his wife, and all his friends unto him, Let a gallows be made of fifty cubits high, and to-morrow speak thou unto the king that Mordecai may be hanged thereon. Then go thou in merrily with the king unto the banquet. And the thing pleased Haman, and he caused the gallows to be made. Chapter 6 On that night could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles and they were read before the king. And it was found written that Mordecai had told of Bichthana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. And the king said, What honour and dignity hath been done to Mordecai for this? Then said the king's servants that ministered unto him, There is nothing done for him. And the king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house, to speak unto the king, to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. And the king's servants said unto him, Behold, Haman standeth in the court. And the king said, Let him come in. And so Haman came in. And the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honour? Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom would the king delight to do honour more than to myself? And Haman answered the king, For the man whom the king delighteth to honour, let the royal apparel be brought which the king useth to wear and the horse that the king rideth upon, and the crown royal which is set upon his head, and let this apparel and horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man withal, whom the king delighteth to honour, and bring him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighteth to honour. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, and take the apparel, and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew, 
that sitteth at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that thou hast spoken. Then took Haman the apparel and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai, and brought him on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighteth to honour. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hasted to his house mourning, and having his head covered. And Haman told Zeresh his wife, and all his friends, everything that had befallen him. Then said his wise men, and Zeresh his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be the seed of the Jews, before whom thou hast begun to fall, thou shalt not prevail against him, but shalt surely fall before him. And while they were yet talking with him, came the king's chamberlains, and hasted to bring Haman unto the banquet that Esther had prepared. Chapter 7 So the king and Haman came to banquet with Esther the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day at the banquet of wine, What is thy petition, Queen Esther? and it shall be granted thee. And what is thy request, and it shall be performed, even to the half of the kingdom? Then Esther the queen answered, and said, If I have found favour in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition, and my people at my request. For we are sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not countervail the king's damage. Then the king Ahasuerus answered, and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he? And where is he that durst presume in his heart to do so? And Esther said, The adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. And the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make request for his life to Esther the queen, for he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the palace of the banquet of wine, and Haman was fallen upon the bed whereon Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered Haman's face. And Harbona, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also, the gallows, fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who spoken good for the king, standeth in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him thereon. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. Chapter 8 On that day did the king Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jew's enemy, unto Esther the queen. And Mordecai came before the king. For Esther had told what he was unto her. And the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it unto Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spake yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears to put away the mischief of Haman the Agagite and his device that he had devised against the Jews. 
Then the king held out the golden scepter toward Esther. So Esther arose, and stood before the king, and said, If it please the king, and if I have found favour in his sight, and the thing seem right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Habadatha, the Agagite, which he wrote to destroy the Jews which are in all the king's provinces. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come unto my people? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? Then the king, Ahasuerus, said unto Esther the queen, and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and him they have hanged upon the gallows, because he laid his hand upon the Jews. Write ye also for the Jews, as it liketh you, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring. For the writing which is written in the king's name, and sealed with the king's ring, may no man reverse. Then were the king's scribes called at that time in the third month, that is, the month Sivan, on the three and twentieth day thereof, and it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews, and to the lieutenants and the deputies and rulers of the provinces, which are from India unto Ethiopia, an hundred twenty and seven provinces, unto every province according to the writing thereof, and unto every people after their language, and to the Jews according to their writing, and according to their language. And he wrote in the king Ahasuerus's name, and sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by posts on horseback, and riders on mules, camels, and young dromedaries, wherein the king granted the Jews, which were in every city, to gather themselves together, and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish all the power of the people, and province that would assault them, both little ones and women, and to take the spoil of them for a prey, upon one day, in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, namely, upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month Adar. The copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people, and that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. So the posts that rode upon mules and camels went out, being hastened and pressed on by the king's commandment. And the decree was given at Shushan, the palace. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and with a great crown of gold, and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced, and was glad. And the Jews had light, and gladness, and joy, and honour. And in every province, and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews, for the fear of the Jews fell upon them. Chapter 9 Now in the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus, to lay hand on such as sought their hurt, and no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell upon all people. 
and all the rulers of the provinces, and the lieutenants, and the deputies, and officers of the king, helped the Jews, because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces. For this man, Mordecai, waxed greater and greater. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, and slaughter, and destruction, and did what they would unto those that hated them. And in Shushan, the palace, the Jews slew and destroyed five hundred men, and Parshandatha, and Delphin, and Asaphtha, and Poratha, and Adalia, and Aradatha, and Parmashta, and Arasai, and Aradai, and Vajazatha, the ten sons of Haman, the sons of Habandatha, the enemy of the Jews, slew they. But on the spoil laid they not their hand. On that day the number of those that were slain in Shushan the palace was brought before the king. And the king said unto Esther the queen, the Jews have slain and destroyed five hundred men in Shushan the palace, and the ten sons of Haman. What have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now what is thy petition, and it shall be granted thee? Or what is thy request further, and it shall be done? Then said Esther, If it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do to-morrow also according to this day's decree, and let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. And the king commanded it so to be done, and the decree was given at Shushan, and they hanged Haman's ten sons. For the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the fourteenth day also of the month Adar, and slew three hundred men at Shushan. But on the prey they laid not their hand. But the other Jews that were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together, and stood for their lives, and had rest from their enemies, and slew of their foes seventy and five thousand, but they laid not their hands on the prey. On the thirteenth day of the month, Adar, and on the fourteenth day of the same, rested they, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews that were at Shushan assembled together on the thirteenth day thereof, and on the fourteenth thereof, and on the fifteenth day of the same they rested, and made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the fourteenth day of the month Adar a day of gladness and feasting, and a good day, and of sending portions one to another. And Mordecai wrote these things, and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus, both nigh and far, to establish this among them that they should keep the fourteenth day of the month Adar, and the fifteenth day of the same yearly, as the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies, and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy, and from mourning into a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, and of sending portions one to another, and gifts to the poor. And the Jews undertook to do as they had begun, and as Mordecai had written unto them, because Haman, the son of Hamadatha the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had devised against the Jews to destroy them, and had cast pur, that is, the lot, to consume them and to destroy them. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that his wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. Wherefore they called these days Purim, 
after the name of pure. Therefore, for all the words of this letter, and of that which they had seen concerning this matter, and which had come unto them, the Jews ordained, and took upon them, and upon their seed, and upon all such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail that they would keep these two days according to their writing, and according to their appointed time every year, and that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city, and that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. Then Esther the queen, the daughter of Abihail, and Mordecai the Jew, wrote with all authority to confirm this second letter of Purim. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews to the hundred twenty and seven provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus, with words of peace and truth, to confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed, according as Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them, and as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed, the matters of the fasting and their cry. And the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book. Chapter 10 And the king Ahasuerus laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea, and all the acts of his power and of his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai, whereunto the king advanced him, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was next unto king Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people, and speaking peace to all his seed. End of section 49section fifty of the holy bible the king james version job chapters one through twenty two this recording is in the public domain your reader michael armenta chapter one there was a man in the land of uz whose name was job and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared god and eschewed evil and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned, and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and sheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, 
and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job, and said, The oxen were ploughing, and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them, and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, the fire of God is fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands, and fell upon the camels, and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another, and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose, and rent his mantle, and shaved his head, and fell upon the ground, and worshipped, and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not nor charged God foolishly. Chapter 2 Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God, and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him, to destroy him, without cause, and Satan answered the Lord, and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils, from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Then his wife said unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God, and die! But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every one from his own place, Eliphaz the Temanite, and Bildad the Shuhite, 
and Zophar the Naamathite, for they had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him, and to comfort him. And when they lifted up their eyes afar off, and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent every one his mantle, and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him upon the ground, seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Chapter 3 After this opened Job his mouth, and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a man-child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. As for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the number of the months. Lo, let that night be solitary. Let no joyful voice come therein. Let them curse it that curse the day, who are ready to raise up their mourning. Let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day, because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from mine eyes. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me, or why the breast that I should suck? For now should I have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. With kings and counsellors of the earth, which build desolate places for themselves, or with princes that had gold, who filled their houses with silver, or as in hidden, untimely birth I had not been, as infants which never saw light. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. The small and great are there, and the servant is free from his master. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery? and life unto the bitter in soul, which long for death, but it cometh not, and dig for it more than for hid treasures, which rejoice exceedingly, and are glad when they can find the grave. Why is light given to a man whose way is hid, and from whom God hath hedged in? For my sighing cometh before I eat, and my roarings are poured out like waters. For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Chapter 4 Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, If we assay to commune with thee, wilt thou be grieved? But who can withhold himself from speaking? Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholden him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. But now it is come upon thee, and thou faintest. It toucheth thee, and thou art troubled. Is this not thy fear, thy confidence, thy hope? and the uprightness of thy ways? Remember, I pray thee, who ever perished, being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? Even as I have seen, they that plough iniquity, and sow wickedness, reap the same. By the blast of God they perish, and by the breath of his nostrils are they consumed. The roaring of the lion, 
and the voice of the fierce lion and the teeth of the young lions are broken the old lion perisheth for lack of prey and the stout lion's whelps are scattered abroad now a thing was secretly brought to me and mine ear received a little thereof in thoughts from the visions of the night when deep sleep falleth on men fear came upon me and trembling which made all my bones to shake then a spirit passed before my face the hair of my flesh stood up it stood still but i could not discern the form thereof an image was before mine eyes there was silence and i heard a voice saying shall mortal man be more just than god shall a man be more pure than his maker behold he put no trust in his servants and his angels he charged with folly how much less in them that dwell in houses of clay whose foundation is in the dust which are crushed before the moth they are destroyed from morning to evening they perish for ever without any regarding it doth not their excellency which is in them go away they die even without wisdom chapter five call now if there be any that will answer thee and to which of the saints wilt thou turn for wrath killeth the foolish man and envy slayeth the silly one i have seen the foolish taking root but suddenly i cursed his habitation his children are far from safety and they are crushed in the gate neither is there any to deliver them whose harvest the hungry eateth up and taketh it even out of the thorns and the robber swalloweth up their substance although affliction cometh not forth of the dust neither doth trouble spring out of the ground yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward i would seek unto god and unto god would i commit my cause which doeth great things and unsearchable marvellous things without number who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the fields to set up on high those that be low that those which mourn may be exalted to safety he disappointeth the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise he taketh the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong they meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night but he saveth the poor from the sword from their mouth and from the hand of the mighty so the poor hath hope and iniquity stoppeth her mouth behold happy is the man whom god correcteth therefore despise not thou the chastening of the almighty for he maketh sore and bindeth up he woundeth and his hands make whole he shall deliver thee in six troubles yea in seven there shall no evil touch thee in famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh at destruction and famine thou shalt laugh neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field and the beasts of the fields shall be at peace with thee and thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace and thou shalt visit thy habitation and shalt not sin thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great and thine offspring as the grass of the earth thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age like as a shock of corn cometh in his season lo this we have searched it so it is hear it and know thou it for thy good chapter six but job answered and said oh that my grief were thoroughly weighed and my calamity laid in the balances together for now it would be heavier than the sand of the sea 
therefore my words are swallowed up for the arrows of the almighty are within me the poison whereof drinketh up my spirit the terrors of god do set themselves in array against me doth the wild ass bray when he hath grass or loweth the ox over his fodder can that which is unsavoury be eaten without salt or is there any taste in the white of an egg the things that my soul refused to touch are as my sorrowful meat oh that i might have my request and that god would grant me the thing that i long for even that it would please god to destroy me that he would let loose his hand and cut me off then should i yet have comfort yea i would harden myself in sorrow let him not spare for i have not concealed the words of the holy one what is my strength that i should hope and what is mine end that i should prolong my life is my strength the strength of stones or is my flesh of brass is not my help in me and is wisdom driven quite from me to him that is afflicted pity should be shewed from his friend but he forsaketh the fear of the almighty my brethren have dealt deceitfully as a brook and as the stream of brooks they pass away which are blackish by reason of the ice and wherein the snow is hid what time they wax warm they vanish when it is hot they are consumed out of their place the paths of their way are turned aside they go to nothing and perish the troops of tima looked the companies of sheba waited for them they were confounded because they had hoped they came thither and were ashamed for now ye are nothing ye see my casting down and are afraid did i say bring unto me or give a reward for me of your substance or deliver me from the enemy's hand or redeem me from the hand of the mighty teach me and i will hold my tongue and cause me to understand wherein i have erred how forcible are right words but what doth your arguing reprove do ye imagine to reprove words and the speeches of one that is desperate which are as wind yea ye overwhelm the fatherless and ye dig a pit for your friend now therefore be content look upon me for it is evident unto you if i lie return i pray you let it not be iniquity yea return again my righteousness is in it is there iniquity in my tongue cannot my taste discern perverse things chapter seven is there not an appointed time to man upon earth are not his days also like the days of an hireling as a servant earnestly desireth the shadow and as an hireling looketh for the reward of his work so am i made to possess months of vanity and wearisome nights are appointed to me when i lie down i say when shall i arise and the night be gone and i am full of tossings to and fro unto the dawning of the day my flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust my skin is broken and become loathsome my days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope o oh, remember that my life is wind when i shall no more see good the eye of him that hath seen me shall see me no more thine eyes are upon me and i am not as the cloud is consumed and vanisheth away so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more he shall return no more to his house neither shall his place know him any more therefore i will not refrain my mouth i will speak in the anguish of my spirit i will complain in the bitterness of my soul am i a sea or a whale that thou settest a watch over me when i say my bed shall comfort me my couch shall ease my complaint 
then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions so that my soul chooseth strangling and death rather than my life i loathe it i would not live alway let me alone for my days are vanity what is man that thou shouldst magnify him and that thou shouldst set thine heart upon him and that thou shouldst visit him every morning and try him every moment how long wilt thou not depart from me nor let me alone till i swallow down my spittle i have sinned what shall i do unto thee o thou preserver of men why hast thou set me as a mark against thee so that i am a burden to myself and why dost thou not pardon my transgressions and take away my iniquity for now shall i sleep in the dust and thou shalt seek me in the morning but i shall not be chapter eight then answered bildad the shuhite and said and how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind doth god pervert judgment or doth the almighty pervert justice if thy children have sinned against him and he have cast them away for their transgression if thou would seekest unto god be times and make thy supplication to the almighty if thou wert pure and upright surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness prosperous though thy beginning was small yet thy latter end should greatly increase for inquire i pray thee of the former age and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers shall not they teach thee and tell thee and utter words out of their heart can the rush grow up without mire can the flag grow without water while it is yet in his greenness and not cut down it withereth before any other herb so are the paths of all that forget god and the hypocrite's hope shall perish whose hope shall be cut off and whose trust shall be a spider's web he shall lean upon his house but it shall not stand he shall hold it fast but it shall not endure he is green before the sun and his branch shooteth forth in his garden his roots are wrapped about the heap and seeth the place of stones if he destroy him from his place then it shall deny him saying i have not seen thee behold this is the joy of his way and out of the earth shall others grow behold god will not cast away a perfect man neither will he help the evil doers till he fill thy mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing they that hate thee shall be clothed with shame and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught chapter nine then job answered and said i know it is so of a truth but how should man be just with god if he will contend with him he cannot answer him one of a thousand he is wise in heart and mighty in strength who hath hardened himself against him and hath prospered which removeth the mountains and they know not which overturn them in his anger which shaketh the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble which commandeth the sun and it riseth not and sealeth up the stars which alone spreadeth out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea which maketh arcturus orion and pleiades and the chambers of the south which doeth great things past finding out yea and with wonders without number lo he goeth by me and i see him not he passeth on also but i perceive him not behold he taketh away who can hinder him who will say unto him what doest thou 
if God will not withdraw his anger. The proud helpers do stoop under him. How much less shall I answer him, and choose out my words to reason with him, whom, though I were righteous, yet would I not answer, but I would make supplication to my judge. If I had called, and he had answered me, yet would I not believe that he had hearkened unto my voice, for he breaketh me with a tempest, and multiplieth my wounds without cause. He will not suffer me to take my breath, but filleth me with bitterness. If I speak of strength, lo, he is strong, and if of judgment, who shall set me a time to plead? If I justify myself, mine own mouth shall condemn me. If I say, I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. Though I were perfect, yet would I not know my soul. I would despise my life. This is one thing, therefore I said it. He destroyeth the perfect and the wicked. If the scourge slay suddenly, he will laugh at the trial of the innocent. If the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? No, my days are swifter than a post. They flee away, they see no good. They are passed away as the swift ships, as the eagle that hasteth to the prey. If I say, I will forget my complaint, I will leave off my heaviness and comfort myself. I am afraid of all my sorrows. I know that thou wilt not hold me innocent. If I be wicked, why then labor I in vain? If I wash myself with snow water, and make my hands never so clean, yet shalt thou plunge me in the ditch, and mine own clothes shall abhor me. For he is not a man as I am, that I should answer him. And we should come together in judgment. Neither is there any daysman betwixt us that might lay his hand upon us both. Let him take his rod away from me, and let not his fear terrify me. Then would I speak and not fear him. But it is not so with me. Chapter 10 my soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon myself. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will say unto God, Do not condemn me. Shew me wherefore thou contendest with me. Is it good unto thee that thou shouldest oppress, that thou shouldest despise the work of thine hands, and shine upon the counsel of the wicked? Hast thou eyes of flesh, or seest thou as man seeth? Are thy days as the days of man? Are thy years as man's days, that thou inquirest after mine iniquity, and searchest after my sin? Thou knowest that I am not wicked, and there is none that can deliver out of thine hand. Thine hands have made me, and fashioned me together round about, yet thou dost destroy me. Remember, I beseech thee, that thou hast made me as the clay. And wilt thou bring me into dust again? Hast thou not poured me out as milk, and curdled me like cheese? Thou hast clothed me with skin and flesh, and hast fenced me with bones and sinews. Thou hast granted me life and favor, and thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. And these things hast thou hid in thine heart. I know that this is with thee. If I sin, then thou markest me, and thou wilt not acquit me from mine iniquity. If I be wicked, woe unto me. And if I be righteous, yet will I not lift up my head. I am full of confusion. Therefore see thou mine affliction, for it increaseth. Thou huntest me as a fierce lion, and again thou shewest 
thyself marvellous upon me. Thou renewest thy witnesses against me, and increasest thine indignation upon me. Changes and war are against me. Wherefore, then, hast thou brought me forth out of the womb? Oh, that I had given up the ghost, and no eye had seen me! I should have been as though I had not been. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. Are not my days few? Cease, then, and let me alone, that I may take comfort a little. Before I go, whence I shall not return, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death, a land of darkness as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death, without any order, and where the light is as darkness. Chapter 11 Then answered Zophar the Namathite, and said, Should not the multitude of words be answered, and should a man full of talk be justified, should thy lies make men hold their peace? And when thou mockest, Shall no man make thee ashamed? For thou hast said, My doctrine is pure, and I am clean in thine eyes. But, oh, that God would speak and open his lips against thee, and that he would shew thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. Canst thou, by searching, find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as high as heaven. What canst thou do? Deeper than hell, what canst thou know? The measure thereof is longer than the earth, and broader than the sea. If he cut off and shut up, or gather together, then who can hinder him? For he knoweth vain men. He seeth wickedness also. Will he not then consider it? For vain men would be wise, though man be born like a wild ass's colt. If thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thine hands toward him, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away, and let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacles. For then shalt thou lift up thy space without spot. Yea, Thou shalt be steadfast, and shalt not fear, because thou shalt forget thy misery, and remember it as waters that pass away, and thine age shall be clearer than the noonday. Thou shalt shine forth, thou shalt be as the morning, thou shalt be secure, because there is hope. Yea, and thou shalt be secure, because there is hope. Yea, thou shalt dig about thee and thou shalt take thy rest in safety. Also thou shalt lie down, and none shall make thee afraid. Yea, many shall make suit unto thee. But the eyes of the wicked shall fail, and they shall not escape, and their hope shall be as the giving up of the ghost. Chapter 12 And Job answered and said, No doubt... But ye are the people, and wisdom shall die with you. But I have an understanding as well as you. I am not inferior to you. Yea, who knoweth not such things as these? I am as one mocked of his neighbor, who calleth upon God, and he answereth him. The just upright man is laughed to scorn. He that is ready to slip with his feet is as a lamp despised in the thought of him that is at ease. The tabernacles of robbers prosper, and they that provoke God are secure, into whose hand God bringeth abundantly. But ask now the beasts, and they shall teach thee, and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee and the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee. Who knoweth not in all these that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? In whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind? 
doth not the ear try words and the mouth taste his meat with the ancient is wisdom and in length of days understanding with him is wisdom and strength and he hath counsel and understanding behold he breaketh down and it cannot be built again he shutteth up a man and there can be no opening behold he withholdeth the waters and they dry up also he sendeth them out and they overturn the earth with him is strength and wisdom the deceived and the deceiver are his he leadeth counsellors away spoiled and maketh the judges fools he looseth the bond of kings and girdeth their loins with a girdle he leadeth princes away spoiled and overthroweth the mighty he removeth away the speech of the trusty and taketh away the understanding of the aged he poureth contempt upon princes and weakeneth the strength of the mighty he discovereth deep things out of darkness and bringeth out to light the shadow of death he increaseth the nations and destroyeth them he enlargeth the nations and straighteneth them again he taketh away the heart of the chief of the people of the earth and causeth them to wander in a wilderness where there is no way they grope in the dark without light and he maketh them to stagger like a drunken man chapter thirteen lo mine eye hath seen all this mine ear hath heard it and understood it what ye know the same do i know also i am not inferior unto you surely i would speak to the almighty and i desire to reason with god but ye are forgers of lies ye are all physicians of no value so that ye would altogether hold your peace and it should be your wisdom hear now my reasoning and hearken to the pleading of my lips will ye speak wickedly for god and talk deceitfully for him will ye accept his person will ye contend for god is it good that he should search you out or as one man mocketh another do ye so mock him he will surely reprove you if you do secretly accept persons shall not his excellence make you afraid and his dread fall upon you your remembrances are like unto ashes your bodies to bodies of clay hold your peace let me alone that i may speak and let come on me what will wherefore do i take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in mine hand though he slay me yet will i trust in him but i will maintain mine own ways before him he also shall be my salvation for an hypocrite shall not come before him hear diligently my speech and my declaration with your ears behold now i have ordered my cause i know that i shall be justified who is he that will plead with me for now if i hold my tongue i shall give up the ghost only do not two things unto me then will i not hide myself from thee withdraw thine hand far from me and let not thy dread make me afraid then call thou and i will answer or let me speak and answer thou me how many are mine iniquities and sins make me to know my transgression and my sin wherefore hidest thou thy face and holdest me for thine enemy wilt thou break a leaf driven to and fro and wilt thou pursue the dry stubble for thou writest bitter things against me and makest me to possess the iniquities of my youth thou puttest my feet also in the stocks and lookest narrowly unto all my paths thou settest a print upon the heels of my feet and he as a rotten thing consumeth as a garment that is moth-eaten chapter fifteen 
Then answered Eliphaz the Temanite, and said, Should a wise man utter vain knowledge, and fill his belly with the east wind? Should he reason with unprofitable talk, or with speeches wherewith he can do no good? Yea, thou casteth off fear, and restrainest prayer before God. For thy mouth uttered thine iniquity, and thou choosest the tongue of the crafty. Thine own mouth condemn thee, and not I. Yea, thine own lips testify against thee. Art thou the first man that was born? Or wast thou made before the hills? Hast thou heard the secret of God? And dost thou restrain wisdom to thyself? What knowest thou that we do not? What understandest thou which is not in us? With us are both the grey-headed and very aged men, much elder than thy father. Are the consolations of God small with thee? Is there any secret thing with thee? Why doth thine heart carry thee away? And what do thy eyes wink at, that thou turnest thy spirit against God, and lettest such words go out of thy mouth? What is man that he should be clean? And he, which is born of a woman, that he should be righteous? Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints. Yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. How much more abominable and filthy is man, which drinketh iniquity like water? I will shew thee, hear me, and that which I have seen I will declare which wise men have told to thy fathers, and have not hid it, to whom alone the earth was given, that no stranger passed among them. The wicked man travaileth with pain all his days, and the number of years is hidden to the oppressor. A dreadful sound is in his ears. In prosperity the destroyer shall come upon him, he believeth not that he shall return out of darkness, and he is waited for the sword. He wandereth abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand. Trouble and anguish shall make him afraid. They shall prevail against him, as a king ready to the battle. For he stretcheth out his hand against God, and strengthened himself against the Almighty. He runneth upon him, even on his neck, upon the thick bosses of his bucklers, because he covereth his face with his fatness, and maketh collops of fat on his flanks. And he dwelleth in desolate cities, and in houses which no man inhabiteth, which are ready to become heaps. He shall not be rich, Neither shall his substance continue, neither shall he prolong the perfection thereof upon the earth. He shall not depart out of darkness. The flame shall dry up his branches, and by the breath of his mouth shall he go away. Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity, for vanity shall be his recompense. It shall be accomplished before his time and his branch shall not be green. He shall shake off his unripe grape as the vine, and shall cast off his flower as the olive. The congregation of hypocrites shall he be desolate, and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. They conceive mischief, and bring forth vanity, and their belly prepareth deceit. Chapter 16 then Job answered and said, I have heard many such things. Miserable comforters are ye all. Shall vain words have an end? Or what emboldeneth thee that thou answerest? I also could speak as ye do, if your soul were in my soul's stead. I could heap up words against you, and shake mine head at you. But I would strengthen you with my mouth, and the moving of my lips should assuage your grief. Though I speak, my grief is not assuaged, and though I forbear, what am I eased? But now he hath made me weary. 
thou hast made desolate all my company and thou hast filled me with wrinkles which is a witness against thee and my leanness rising up in me beareth witness to my face he teareth me in his wrath who hateth me he gnasheth upon me with his teeth mine enemy sharpeneth his eyes upon me they have gaped upon me with their mouth they have smitten me on the cheek reproachfully they have gathered themselves together against me god hath delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of the wicked i was at ease but he hath broken me asunder he hath also taken me by my neck and shaken me to pieces and set me up for his mark his archers compass me round about he cleaveth my reins asunder and doth not spare he poureth out my gall upon the ground he breaketh me with breach upon breach he runneth upon me like a giant i have sewed sackcloth upon my skin and defiled my horn in the dust my face is foul with weeping and on my eyelids is the shadow of death not for any injustice in mine hands also my prayer is pure o earth cover not thou my blood and let my cry have no place also now behold my witness is in heaven and my record is on high my friends scorn me but mine eye poureth out tears unto god o oh, that one might plead for a man with god as a man pleadeth for his neighbour when a few years are come then i shall go the way whence i shall not return chapter seventeen my breath is corrupt my days are extinct the graves are ready for me are there not mockers with me and doth not mine eye continue in their provocation lay down now put me in a surety with thee who is he that will strike hands with me for thou hast hid their heart from understanding therefore shalt thou not exalt them he that speaketh flattery to his friends even the eyes of his children shall fail he hath made me also a byword of the people and aforetime i was as a tabre mine eye also is dim by reason of sorrow and all my members are as shadow upright men shall be astonished at this and the innocent shall stir up himself against the hypocrite the righteous also shall hold on his way and he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger but as for you all do ye return and come now for i cannot find one wise man among you my days are past my purposes are broken off even the thoughts of my heart they change the night into day the light is short because of the darkness if i wait the grave is mine house i have made my bed in the darkness i have said to corruption thou art my father to the worm thou art my mother and my sister and where is now my hope as for my hope who shall see it they shall go down to the bars of the pit when our arrest together is in the dust chapter eighteen then answered bildad the shuhite and said how long will it be ere ye make an end of words mark and afterwards we will speak wherefore are we counted as beasts and reputed vile in your sight he teareth himself in his anger shall the earth be forsaken for thee and shall the rock be removed out of his place yea the light of the wicked shall be put out and the spark of his fire shall not shine the light shall be dark in his tabernacle 
and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walketh upon a snare. The jinn shall take him by the heel, and the robber shall prevail against him. The snare is laid for him in the ground, and a trap for him in the way. Terror shall make him afraid on every side, and shall drive him to his feet. His strength shall be hunger-bitten, and destruction shall be ready at his side. It shall devour the strength of his skin, even the firstborn. Of death shall devour his strength. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle, and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. It shall dwell in his tabernacle, because it is none of his. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. His roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness, and chased out of the world. He shall neither have son or nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. They that come after him shall be astonished at his day, as they that went before were affrighted. Surely such are the dwellings of the wicked, and this is the place of him that knoweth not God. Chapter 19 Then Job answered and said, How long will ye vex my soul, and break me in pieces with words? These ten times have ye reproached me. Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourselves strange to me. And be it indeed that I have erred, mine error remaineth with myself. If indeed ye will magnify yourselves against me, and plead against me my reproach. Know now that God hath overthrown me, and hath compassed me with his net. Behold, I cry out of wrong. But I am not heard. I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. He hath fenced up my way that I cannot pass, and he hath set darkness in my paths. He hath stripped me of my glory, and taken the crown from my head. He hath destroyed me on every side, and I am gone. And mine hope hath he removed like a tree. He hath also kindled his wrath against me, and he counteth me unto him as one of his enemies. His troops come together, and raise up their way against me, and encamp round about my tabernacle. He hath put my brethren far from me, and mine acquaintance are verily estranged from me. My kinsfolk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. They that dwell in mine house, and my maids, count me for a stranger." I am an alien in their sight. I called my servant, and he gave me no answer. I entreated him with my mouth. My breath is strange to my wife, though I entreated for the children's sake of mine own body. Yea, young children despised me. I arose, and they spake against me. All my inward friends abhorred me and they whom I loved are turned against me. My bone cleaveth to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Have pity upon me. Have pity upon me, O ye, my friends. For the hand of God hath touched me. Why do ye persecute me as God, and are not satisfied with my flesh? O oh, that my words were now written! O oh, that they were printed in a book! That they were graven with an iron pen, and led in the rock for ever! For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh Shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, for my reins be consumed within me. 
but ye should say, Why persecute we him, seeing the root of the matter is found in me? Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. Chapter 20 Then answered so far the Namathite, and said, Therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer, and for this I make haste. I have heard the check of my reproach, and the spirit of my understanding causeth me to answer. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment? Though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish for ever, like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? He shall fly away as a dream, and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hand shall restore their goods. His bones are full of the sin of his youth but shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat in his bowels is turned, it is the gall of asps within him. He hath swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly, he shall suck the poison of asps, the viper's tongue shall slay him. He shall not see the rivers, the floods, the brooks of honey and butter. That which he laboured for shall he restore, and shall not swallow it down. According to his substance shall the restitution be, and he shall not rejoice therein. Because he hath oppressed and hath forsaken the poor, because he hath violently taken away an house which he builded not. Surely he shall not feel quietness in his belly. He shall not save of that which he desired. There shall none of his meat be left. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. In the fullness of his sufficiency he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. When he is about to fill his belly... God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him, and it shall rain it upon him while he is eating. He shall flee from the iron weapon, and the bow of steel shall strike him through. It is drawn, and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. All darkness shall be hid in his secret places. A fire not blown shall consume him. It shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. The heathen shall reveal his iniquity, and the earth shall rise up against him. The increase of his house shall depart, and his good shall flow away in the day of his wrath. Chapter 21 But Job answered and said, Hear diligently my speech, and let this be your consolations. Suffer me that I may speak, and after that I have spoken, mock on. As for me, is my complaint to man? And if it were so, why should not my spirit be troubled? Mark me, and be astonished, and lay your hand upon your mouth. Even when I remember I am afraid, and trembling taketh hold on my flesh. Wherefore do the wicked live, become old, yea, are mighty in power? Their seed is established in their sight with them, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, neither is the rod of God upon them. Their bull gendereth, and faileth not. Their cow calveth, and cast it not her calf. They send forth their little ones like a flock, 
in their children dance they take the timbrel and harp and rejoice at the sound of the organ they spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave therefore they say unto god depart from us for we desire not the knowledge of thy ways what is the almighty that we should serve him and what profit should we have if we pray unto him lo their good is not in their hand the counsel of the wicked is far from me how oft is the candle of the wicked put out and how oft cometh their destruction upon them god distributeth sorrows in his anger they are as stubble before the wind and as chaff that the storm carrieth away god layeth up his iniquity for his children he rewardeth him and he shall know it his eyes shall see his destruction and he shall drink of the wrath of the almighty for what pleasure hath he in his house after him when the number of his months is cut off in the midst shall any teach god knowledge seeing he judgeth those that are high one dieth in his full strength being wholly at ease and quiet his breasts are full of milk and his bones are moistened with marrow and another dieth in the bitterness of his soul and never eateth with pleasure they shall lie down alike in the dust and the worm shall cover them behold i know your thoughts and the devices which ye wrongfully imagine against me for ye say where is the house of the prince and where are the dwelling places of the wicked have ye not asked them that go by the way and do ye not know their tokens that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction they shall be brought forth to the day of wrath who shall declare his way to his face and who shall repay him for what he hath done yet shall he be brought to the grave and shall remain in the tomb the clods of the valley shall be sweet unto him and every man shall draw after him as there are innumerable before him how then comfort ye me in vain seeing in your answers there remaineth falsehood chapter twenty two then eliphaz the temanite answered and said can a man be profitable unto god as he that is wise may be profitable unto himself is it any pleasure to the almighty that thou art righteous or is it gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect will he reprove thee for fear of thee will he enter with thee into judgment is not thy wickedness great and thine iniquities infinite for thou hast taken a pledge from my brother for naught and stripped the naked of their clothing thou hast not given water to the weary to drink and thou hast withholden bread from the hungry but as for the mighty man he had the earth and the honourable man dwelt in it thou hast sent widows away empty and the arms of the fatherless have been broken therefore snares are round about thee and sudden fear troubleth thee or darkness that thou canst not see and abundance of waters cover thee is not god in the height of heaven and behold the height of the stars how high they are and thou sayest how doth god know can he judge through the dark cloud thick clouds are a covering to him that he seeth not and he walketh in the circuit of heaven hast thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden which were cut down out of time whose foundation was overflown with a flood which said unto god depart from us and what can the almighty do for them yet he filled his houses with good things but the counsel of the wicked is far from me the righteous see it and are glad and the innocent laugh them to scorn whereas our substance is not cut down but the remnant of them the fire consumeth acquainteth now thyself with him and be at peace thereby good shall come unto thee receive i pray thee the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart 
if thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defence, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, There is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. End of section 50《Section 51 of The Holy Bible, the King James Version, Job, Chapters 23-42. to This recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Michael Armenta. Chapter 23 Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint bitter. My stroke is heavier than my groaning. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my cause before him, and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me, and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. There the righteous might dispute with him. So shall I be delivered for ever from my judge. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept, and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. But he is in one mind, and who can turn him? And what his soul desireth, even that he doeth. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. Therefore am I troubled at his presence. When I consider, I am afraid of him. For God maketh my heart soft, and the Almighty troubleth me, because I was not cut off before the darkness. Neither hath he covered the darkness from my face. Chapter 24 Why, seeing times that are not hidden from the Almighty, do they that know him not see his days? Some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed thereof. They drive away the ass of the fatherless. They take the widow's ox for a pledge. They turn the needy out of the way. The poor of the earth hide themselves together. Behold, as wild asses in the desert, go they forth to their work, rising betimes for a prey. The wilderness yieldeth food for them and for their children. They reap every one corn in the field, and they gather the vintage of the wicked. They cause the naked to lodge without clothing, but they have no covering in the cold. They are wet with the showers of the mountains, and embrace the rock for want of a shelter. They pluck the fatherless from the breast, and take a pledge of the poor. They cause him to go naked without clothing, and they take away the sheaf from the hungry, which make oil within their walls and tread their wine-presses, and suffer thirst. Men groan from out of the city, and the soul of the wounded crieth out, yet God layeth not folly to them. They are of those that rebel against the light. They know not the ways thereof, 
nor abide in the paths thereof. The murderer rising with the light killeth the poor and needy, and in the night is as a thief. The eye also of the adulterer waiteth for the twilight, saying, No eye shall see me, and disguiseth his face. In the dark they dig through houses, which they had marked for themselves in the daytime. They know not the light, for the morning is to them even as the shadow of death. If one know them, they are in the terrors of the shadow of death. He is swift as the waters, their portion is cursed in the earth. He beholdeth not the ways of the vineyards. Drought and heat consume the snow waters. So doth the grave those which have sinned. The womb shall forget him. The worm shall feed sweetly on him. He shall be no more remembered. And the wickedness shall be broken as a tree. His evil entreateth the barren that beareth not, and doeth not good to the widow. He draweth also the mighty with his power. He riseth up, and no man is sure of life, though it be given him to be in safety, whereon he resteth. Yet his eyes are upon their ways. They are exalted for a little while, but are gone and brought low. They are taken out of the way as all other, and cut off as the tops of the ears of corn. And if it be not so now, who will make me a liar, and my speech nothing worth? Chapter 25 Then answered Bildad the Shuhite, and said, Dominion and fear are with him. He maketh peace in his high places. Is there any number of his armies? And upon whom doth his light arise? How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Behold, even to the moon, and it shineth not. Yea, the stars are not pure in his sight. How much less man that is a worm, and the son of man which is a worm. Chapter 26 but Job answered and said, How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that hath no strength? How hast thou counseled him that hath no wisdom? And how hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? To whom hast thou uttered words, and whose spirit came from thee? Dead things are formed from under the waters, and the inhabitants thereof. Hell is naked before him, and destruction hath no covering. He stretcheth out the north over the empty place, and hangeth the earth upon nothing. He bindeth up the waters in his thick clouds, and the cloud is not rent under them. He holdeth back the face of his throne, and spreadeth his cloud upon it. He hath compassed the waters with bounds, until the day and night come to an end. The pillars of heaven tremble, and are astonished at his reproof. He divideth the sea with his power, and by his understanding he smiteth through the proud. By his spirit he hath garnished the heavens, his hand hath formed the crooked serpent. Lo, these are parts of his ways, but how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power... Who can understand? Chapter 27 Moreover, Job continued his parable, and said, As God liveth, who hath taken away my judgment, and the Almighty, who hath vexed my soul, all the while my breath is in me, and the Spirit of God is in my nostrils, my lips shall not speak wickedness, nor my tongue utter deceit. God forbid that I should justify you. Till I die, I will not remove mine integrity from me. My righteousness I hold fast, and will not let it go. My heart shall not reproach me so long as I live. 
let mine enemy be as the wicked, and he that riseth up against me as the unrighteous. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he hath gained, when God taketh away his soul, will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? Will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? I will teach you by the hand of God. That which is with the Almighty will I not conceal. Behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? This is the portion of a wicked man with God, and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Though he heap up silver as the dust, and prepare raiment as the clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. He buildeth his house as a moth, and as a booth that the keeper maketh. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. The east wind carrieth him away, and he departeth, and as a storm hurleth him out of his place. For God shall cast upon him, and not spare. He would fain flee out of his hand. Men shall clap their hands at him, and shall hiss him out of his place. Chapter 28 Surely there is a vein for the silver, and a place for gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth, and brass is molten out of the stone. He setteth an end to darkness, and searcheth out all perfection, the stones of darkness, and the shadow of death. The flood breaketh out from the inhabitant, even the waters forgotten of the foot. They are dried up, they are gone away from men. As for the earth, out of it cometh bread, and under it is turned up as it were fire. The stones of it are the place of sapphires, and it hath dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. He putteth forth his hand upon the rock, he overturneth the mountains by the roots. He cutteth out rivers among the rocks, and his eye seeth every precious thing. He bindeth the floods from overflowing, and the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. But where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Neither is it found in the land of the living. The depth saith, it is not in me, and the sea saith, It is not with me. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx, or the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding, seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living, and kept close from the fowls of the air? Destruction and death say, We have heard the fame thereof with our ears, God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth, and seeth under the whole heaven, to make the weight for the winds, and he weigheth the waters by measure. When he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder, then did he see it, and declare it. He prepared it, 
yea, and searched it out. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is, wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Chapter 29 Moreover, Job continued his parable, and said, O oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me, when his candle shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty was yet with me, and my children were about me, and I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil, when I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street. The young men saw me, and hid themselves, and the aged arose and stood up. The princes refrained talking, and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace, and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me, because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not I searched out, and I break the jaws of the wicked, and plucked the spoil out of his teeth. Then I said, I shall die in my nest, and I shall multiply my days as the sand. My root was spread out by the waters, and the dew lay all night upon my branch. My glory was fresh in me, and my bow was renewed in my hand. Unto me men gave ear, and waited, and kept silence at my counsel. After my words they spake not again, and my speech dropped upon them. And they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth as for the latter rain. If I laughed on them, they believed it not, and the light of my countenance they cast not down. I chose out their way, and sat chief, and dwelt as a king in the army, as one that comforteth the mourners. Chapter 30 but now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Yea, where too might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished? For want of famine they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste, who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them, as after a thief, to dwell in the cliffs of the valley, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. Among the bushes they brayed. Under the nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools. Yea, children of base men. They were viler than the earth. And now I am their song. Yea, I am their byword. They abhor me, they flee far from me, and spare not to spit in my face. Because he hath loosed my cord and afflicted me, they have also let loose the bridle before me. Upon my right hand rise the youth. They push away my feet, and they raise up against me the ways of their destruction. They mar my path, they set forward my calamity, they have no helper. That came upon me as a wide breaking in of waters. In the desolation they rolled themselves upon me. Terrors are turned upon me. They pursue my soul as the wind, 
and my welfare passeth away as a cloud. And now my soul is poured out upon me. The days of affliction have taken hold upon me. My bones are pierced in me in the night season, and my sinews take no rest. By the great force of my disease is my garment changed. It bindeth me about as the collar of my coat. He hath cast me into the mire, and I am become like dust and ashes. I cry unto thee, and thou dost not hear me. I stand up, and thou regardest me not. Thou art become cruel to me. With thy strong hand thou opposest thyself against me. Thou liftest me up to the wind. Thou causest me to ride upon it, and dissolvest my substance. For I know that thou wilt bring me to death, and to the house appointed for all living. Howbeit he will not stretch out his hand to the grave, though they cry in his destruction. Did I not weep for him that was in trouble? Was not my soul grieved for the poor? When I looked for good, then evil came unto me. And when I waited for light, there came darkness. My bowels boiled and rested not. The days of affliction prevented me. I went mourning without the sun. I stood up and cried in the congregation. I am a brother to dragons, and a companion to owls. My skin is black upon me, and my bones are burned with heat. My harp also is turned to mourning, and my organ into the voice of them that weep. Chapter 31 I have made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? For what portion of God is there from above, and what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction to the wicked, and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Doth not he see my ways, and count all my steps? If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot hath hasted to deceit, let me be weighed in an even balance, that God may know mine integrity. If my step hath turned out of the way, as mine heart walk after mine eyes, and if any blot hath cleaved to mine hands, then let me sow, and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down upon her. For this is a heinous crime. Yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. For this is an heinous crime. Yea, it is an iniquity to be punished by the judges. For it is a fire that consumeth to destruction, and would root out all mine increase. If I did despise the cause of my manservant, or of my maidservant, when they contended with me, what then shall I do when God riseth up, and when he visiteth? What shall I answer him? Did not he that made me in the womb make him? And did not one fashion us in the womb? If I have withheld the poor from their desire, or have caused the eyes of the widow to fail, or have eaten my morsel myself alone, and the fatherless hath not eaten thereof, for from my youth he was brought up with me, as with a father, and I have guided her from my mother's womb. If I have seen any parish for want of clothing, or any poor without covering, if his loins have not blessed me, and if he were not warmed with the fleece of my sheep, if I have lifted up my hand against the fatherless when I saw help in the gate, then let mine arm fall from my shoulder blade, and mine arm be broken from the bone, for destruction from God was a terror to me, and by reason of his highness I could not endure. If I have made gold my hope, or have said to the fine gold, Thou art my confidence, if I rejoice because my wealth was great, and because mine hand had gotten much, 
if I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon walking in brightness, and my heart hath been secretly enticed, or my mouth hath kissed my hand, this also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge, for I should have denied the God that is above. If I rejoice at the destruction of him that hated me, or lifted up myself when evil found him, neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to a soul. If the men of my tabernacle said not, O oh, that we had of his flesh, we cannot be satisfied. The stranger did not lodge in the street, but I opened my doors to the traveller. If I covered my transgressions as Adam, by hiding mine iniquity in my bosom, did I fear a great multitude? Or did the contempt of families terrify me that I kept silent and went not out of the door? Oh, that one would hear me! My desire is that the Almighty would answer me, and that mine adversary had written a book. Surely I would take it upon my shoulder, and bind it as a crown to me. I would declare unto him the number of my steps, as a prince would I go near unto him. If my land cry against me, or that the furrows likewise thereof complain, if I have eaten the fruits thereof without money, or have caused the owners thereof to lose their life, let thistles grow instead of wheat, and cockle instead of barley. The words of Job are ended. Chapter 32 So these three men ceased to answer Job, because he was righteous in his own eyes. Then was kindled the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barakel the Busite, of the kindred of Ram. Against Job was his wrath kindled, because he justified himself rather than God. Also against his three friends was his wrath kindled, because they had found no answer, and yet had condemned Job. Now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken, because they were elder than he. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. And Elihu the son of Barakel the Buzite answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore was I afraid, and durst not shew you mine opinion? I said, Days should speak, and a multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. Therefore I said, Hearken to me, I also will shew mine opinion. Behold, I waited for your words, I gave ear to your reasons, whilst ye searched out what to say. Yea, I attended unto you, and behold, there was none of you that convinced Job, or that answered his words, lest ye should say, We have found out wisdom, God thrusteth him down, not man. Now he hath not directed his words against me. Neither will I answer him with your speeches. They were amazed. They answered no more. They left off speaking. When I had waited, for they spake not, but stood still and answered no more, I said, I will answer also my part. I also will shew mine opinion, for I am full of matter, the spirit within me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is as wine which hath no vent, it is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak, that I may be refreshed, I will open my lips and answer. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person, neither let me give flattering titles unto man, for I know not to give flattering titles, 
In so doing, my maker would soon take me away. Chapter 33 Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches, 